All right, so it is uh, Monday, July 22nd at 7 p.m. And um, our uh, chairperson is running just a few minutes late, so we're going to go ahead and open things up. So um, I'll entertain a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. Discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Yeah, we have to vote. Abstain? No? Okay. All right. Only if it's hearing, do we have to vote to open it up? Thank you, baby. <laughs> At least we agree. Um, so, so the first um, agenda, the first item on our agenda is the discussion on Legacy Farms North Road bus issue. And I know we've talked a little bit this, about this in the past. I know that um, this is something that, that Muriel, I think, um, very much wanted to be a part of. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe um, there's a few other things on administrative items that we can move forward with now. Does that make sense, John? Yep. Um, and in particular, I'm just thinking, um, I want to make sure that Muriel's a part of this discussion and I'm not really sure it's worth starting without her. Do we have any sense as to how long she might be? She said a few more minutes. A few more minutes? So. Okay. Um, so actually, let's start with the um, approval of the June 24th meeting minutes. Um, any commentary or discussion on those? If not, then I'll entertain a motion to accept the June 24th, 2019 meeting minutes. So move. Wait, second. Were they in the packet? Oh, they were. You were? Okay. They're not in the table of contents, but okay. Um, any uh, discussion? So one thing to note, um, the minutes have been revised from what was included in the packet, the documents at the bottom were not included, and now they are. Okay. I don't know. Do you want us to read them off what the documents were? Or okay. any need for that? I'm sorry? Is there any need for us to tell you what the documents were, or do you want us to just... Um, sure. We have them? No. No. Okay. okay. I'll open it up. Well, basically, as far as approval of the minutes, that's not the important part. Right. And when I file them with the town clerk, they'll just be included. So they're on Google Drive. Yes, yeah, I can. Well, a friendly yeah. amendment is that we accept the documents as posted on Google Drive. Okay. Yep. So you, are you moving to amend? Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Again? Any discussion about the amendment to accept the minutes um, with uh, the condition that we all take a look at the changes? Is that right? No discussion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? Okay. Uh, what else can we do fairly? We haven't moved to the minutes, though. Yeah, that was just on the amendment. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> um, all right. So I guess at this point, I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes with the amendment. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? All right. We good? That was good. Thank you. I've never actually done this before. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> the best way to learn is to do it. Go try like the president. Yes. Um, I swear you've done it before. No. So Gary, I think Design Review Board is pretty straightforward. There's seven applicants and seven positions. We could maybe do that without Muriel. That's a good suggestion. Thank you, Amy. I second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> no more voting. Um, <laughs> So, so really quickly, just in terms of the applicants there, so who is, um, who is stepping, I mean, most of them are, are returning members of the Design Review Board. Mm -hmm. We've had a vacancy for a year, so the seventh person would be, would be new, but there was a vacancy. So, so we have seven openings and seven applicants. seven applicants. So five members and two alternates. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. So then do we need to vote on which five, five are the full-time members and which two are the alternates then? Yes. I suggest we do a slate, though, with them slotted as it's kind of listed. 
What's that? I, I, I would suggest we vote as a slate. So it's these are the five bold members, these are the two alternates. Yeah, rather than one by one. Okay. I believe Deb is specifically requested to be an alternate. Who did? Deb. Okay. No so, so, so really quickly, we've got um, Jeff Doherty, Amy Ritterbush, uh, Jeanette Thompson, uh, Rita McNamara, Regan. Deb Feinbrug. Sorry, thank you. Uh, Joe Regan. Six. What's that? And Sue Ellen Stoddard. Who, oh. the, the one printed out right. in oh. front of you. Okay. And so um, Deb is requested to be an alternate. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe to make this most efficient, are there any, what's the best way to, does anybody have any strong preferences or recommendations for who the five full-time members should be? So did, is it, it, Mr. Chair, could anybody else request to be an alternate other than Sue Ellen? I don't, didn't notice that they did. Deb, not Sue Ellen. Okay. That did, yeah. Oh, Deb, sorry, Deb, 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 sorry, my mistake. I was under the impression through the chair um, that there were two people that wanted to be alternates or one person who's been an alternate and wouldn't mind continuing as an alternate. I think that was just Deb uh, because the other alternate spot was vacant. It used to be Sean McGinnis, but she hasn't been on it for So a who's while. the new? Who's the new applicant? So we have to decide who. So, Joe so Regan is the new applicant. He's not been on the committee Joe. before. Joe Regan. Yeah. Um, so I think... I think all seven of these people would be great, and um, I think generally, I think with a recommendation, I would recommend that we the new person be the alternate, and then that makes the most take it used to the committee. Great. Yeah. Because I was an alternate for a while before I was a full member, and I, I almost always got to come and speak and vote, so it, it didn't really make much difference that I was an alternate. I think I'd, that makes a lot of sense. I'd also say too that I, I think that's. Do we have to all stand when she comes in the room. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just was wondering. Such a traditionalist. <laughs> I know, I love it. I would, um, put, I would put that on your mom. <laughs> no, no, so, um, because she's a woman. Just a quick update. Yes. We you. held off on the discussion <laughs> on Legacy Road North because Perfect. you know that's an important one to you. Yes. Um, we did uh, approve. Um, amended minutes nice um, and we decided to move on to the design review board appointments nice which we think is reasonably clean cut Mary and Amy are really driving the meeting here not me perfect um, <laughs> let's have a piece of paper from someone that came there you can have this. Is, that, is that good or sure perfect. and yes. so long story short we have seven apps seven applicants for seven positions oh, I love it when a plan um, comes to we need five full-time applicants or full excuse me five Full members. Full members and two alternates. Um, Deb has requested to be an alternate. Okay. And I think we're in reasonably good alignment that the other new applicant would be an appropriate second alternate. Mr. Joe Regan. Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. So we would effectively be returning um, Jeanette Thompson, Amy Ritterbush, Jeff Doherty, uh, Rhea McNamara, um, and um, Sue Ellen. thank you, Sue Ellen Stoddard, as the uh, the full full members. So move for um, a vote. at this point, I'll entertain a motion to I'll nominate. Move the slate. What's that? I'll move the slate. As right. you just defined. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? Okay. Perfect. Design so, review board appointments. And I am busy trying to find my agenda here. So while you're pulling that up, maybe we can move to the um, Legacy Farms North bus issue. Sorry. Who seconded this late? Uh, Muriel, I, I, I second it. it. Yeah, because I moved it as well, but I'll uh, second it instead. Okay. And did you abstain or did you just? Oh, no, I agree. All right. It oh, perfect. Oh, do I have to abstain? Right. Yeah. yeah. Can you vote for yourself? I don't know. Yes, you can vote for yourself, 100%. <laughs> This is America, uh, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, did we all, um, we all voted yes? We all voted yes. Nice. All right. Okay. So, we can probably, just while you're getting caught up, Mariel, we can yep. probably um, move forward to the Legacy Farms North Road bus issue. Perfect. Um, do you? Yes. 
I'll carry on from here. Mr. Catino, are you here for this conversation? Yes, I am. Come on forward. Um, so just to, to catch up um, the viewing public, we have uh, Legacy Farms North Road that has been designed specifically um, through great collaboration between the town and the state to serve as a spine road and take traffic off of the main road. And it is um, it's beginning to be used that way pretty consistently. I think a lot of people are taking advantage of that. Um, and so we have, um, to that end, we've held, held a big fancy ribbon cutting with state officials and local officials. Um, and it is being used uh, in the way it was intended to be used. Um, the issue that we are confronting is that because there is so much development still going on um, off of that spine road in, in Legacy Farms North, um, traditionally the town process does not contemplate accepting a road until all construction is done. Um, so this would be a unique case if we were to contemplate um, accepting that road, and I'm not even sure that it's possible. Have we, do we have any information or feedback from the DPW? We did not. Okay, so I'm gonna take an action item to have a conversation with um, John Westerling at the DPW and just see what his feelings are initially, if that's an approach we take. Um, so we have a road that is heavily traveled and heavily trafficked, intentionally so. Um, and developments, housing developments coming off of the sides. And we have an issue because the school bus company is not able to send or not willing to send um, a school bus up that road. So we have a lot of young children who are having to come down to one point at the corner of Frankland and Legacy Farms North. Um, and there will be only many, many, many more children doing that in the next four or five years. Um, and particularly in the winter, it presents a challenge with um, sidewalks that are plowed or not plowed. They do eventually get plowed, but they may not be plowed um, in time for the school buses. Um, and when I went out there and watched it um, myself before the end of the school year, um, because of the way the school bus approaches, it approaches on Franklin and stops at the corner. So in fact, that traffic, that fast moving through traffic does not stop while those kids are waiting at that bus stop. So um, the parents there that are there now, and I'm, I have full confidence that the parents that move in will, be, will also get engaged on this, would like us to find um, a solution where the children are not um, interacting with high, high, you know, higher speed traffic at, in that way along there. So I don't know what the answer is. Um, it's possible, Gary, it was you that put that thought in my head. It's possible that we think about Legacy Farms North a little bit like we think about existing roads, 135 or Hayden Row or other roads that smaller new roads come off of and we find a way to accept it and therefore let the bus, the school bus come up and the school children would still have to come up from the side roads up to Legacy Farms North but that seems a more uh, amenable solution. Um, but I just was, uh, I was late actually because I was having a conversation uh, with the chair of the select board as well as the chair of the school committee. And the upshot is um, we all have different thoughts about how this might be approached or what needs to happen, um, but we are all committed to uh, finding a solution. And the challenge is, is that we all have to find a solution to a somewhat unique situation together. So, I, but I think we can do that. Um, I'm not sure we can do it by <coughs> September 1, <coughs> um, but I think that we can do it um, pretty, pretty handily. And I know Mr. Catino has been working the issue, so I'll you know, let you jump in. Um, uh, th thank you, through the chair. The, um, uh, you know, I think we have to look at it as a short-term solution, a mid-term solution, and a long-term solution. You know, the, um, the easy one is, would be uh, um, the one that, that you just spoke of with your, with your vice chair saying, you know, can we accept the road as it is and, and you know, leave the bond and, leave, and, and then condition the heck out of it. Like we do a lot of stuff so that make sure that at the end, at the, when the um, whole development is finished that the road is, is brought up to the standards that we normally would, ex would ex uh, expect. Um, 
but you know, as, you know to the chair's point you know that we have been using the road as a town road since before we cut the ribbon and it is doing its job it is pulling off the at least 15 percent of the traffic that goes right to Southboro and as as intended um, but then you know the, the, we're also looking at uh, some short-term and midterm solutions with the uh, with the uh, school committee and the administration we were looking at trying to get a separate bus that the developer said that they would pay for but the only um, uh, quote that came back was for three hundred thousand dollars for the year and and we normally pay somewhere between fifty five and sixty thousand dollars per bus but I don't know whether they didn't understand it or not they were going to send one of those luxury coaches <laughs> Uh, that kneel and they have the air conditioning and the little TVs and I, we thought that was a bit much to take the kids uh, you know two miles to school uh, so hopefully they just under, misunderstood it you know but then the, the developer was also suggesting maybe just th that they would get a bus to pick up the kids in the neighborhoods and just bring them down to Franklin Road until we got a chance to accept it but they're also looking at, at, at that as, a, as an alternative you know, for, for the, for the uh, short-term midterm solution but you know, it, it, what, we, what would be the best is if the um, the planning board and the and the uh, select board could get together with uh, with the townspeople and try to accept the road as is with a lot of conditions, and uh, have a special town meeting to uh, to put it forward and see if we could uh, get the town to buy in on it. Yes. What's the midterm solution again? Well, that was just one of those one of the uh, you know a, a, if we could get it, one of the busing solutions, whether it be this the the bus that picks up the kids and just brings them to the bus stop or a bus that uh, or a bus that uh, takes them right from uh, right from all of their places right to the school because we already they already have a, a, a bus route that, at Franklin Road so rather than double up on that um, but you know and then all that bus would have to do is turn up Franklin Road but to the chair's point one of the one of the issues really was that the that the bus stopped at the corner and people were still flying by which was why it was really important that we, we got a, um, a police officer there. And, the, and we had, for the last month, we had a police officer there for at least one of the pickups each time. And, uh, and most of the times he did to have to do one of these to pull a few people over. And uh, so. So people are not legally obligated to stop if, if the bus is not on. No, no, I'm talking about speeding. No, no, oh, yeah, yeah okay. no, no, people were, to, to your point, people were, yeah, there was one person doing 54 down the road and that was uh and then there was another one speeding down the road it happened to be a uh, one of the smaller um school buses one of the private school buses that brings kids to you know one of the private schools in the area and he was able to nab them also so 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 if i may yeah. through the chair um so we've already explored the i you know like, like so the, the bus company is unwilling or unable to send a bus on a uh, non-approved road so that's the only way to get a school bus on that road is for the road to be approved. From that, from that, from that school bus company. If I'm sorry, through the chair. From that particular school. From bus that bus school, yeah, right. Okay. Let's and keep then, it informal because it's conversational. That's the, fine with me. Oh, the, thank you. Sorry. The the only way to get the uh, road uh, accepted as a town road is through a town meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So then, then the options to accept the road are either we do a special town meeting, which mm -hmm. um, also has some fairly substantial costs to it doesn't it it's not that bad no, it's about no, three thousand dollars well that's all uh, yeah yeah, they, okay. they, yeah and depending on the size it could be as little as 1600 i think yeah. okay it's not it's not a huge i know we it's a huge undertaking to uh to post and invite and and, and hope that we get a quorum from that regard but it's not a huge cost well, hopefully we can get those the 50 or 100 families yeah. to show up <laughs> yeah. yeah right <laughs> um and, and then and then just one one last thing too and i don't know Again, I mean, it, just as I think about this, you know, a couple things come to mind, and so I realize a, a bus company might cost a lot of money, but you know, there's there's van rentals too, um, and the other thing I just throw out there is is carpooling. I mean, I, I realize that that, uh, and I, I know I realize that I don't I don't know if any of the I don't think any of the the, the neighborhood or the people in it are are here now, but. Um, to me, you could you could very very easily and substantially cut down a number. It doesn't solve the problem, but from a, a temporary solution, you know, with a little bit of coordination among the neighborhood, they could substantially reduce the number of <coughs> cars uh, that are that are going down there. But I, I don't disagree. Did you have any other questions or thoughts? 
Um, I'm just nodding my head because I'm, I made a little grid here of all the players involved, and I'm glad that uh, John mentioned the uh, the uh, bus company as some something we could work with. And uh, there's a school committee, planning board, select board, DPW, police, um, and then the, the developer uh, has some role in this as well. But Gary mentioned the neighbors themselves uh, being part of the solution, uh, short-term, mid-term solution, uh, carpooling, uh, that's an excellent idea. Um, the fastest answer would be to accept the road ahead of schedule. There are risks with that. Uh, town meeting, special town meeting, there's a risk with that as well. Um, but uh, long-term, any term, we need safety for the for the kids and maybe a shelter for them to wait in that's protected from traffic that's sturdy enough if a car would hit it wouldn't fall down um, uh, something that uh, something that would be keep them dry when it's raining like it is now and um, and when it snows something that uh, who does remove the snow uh, on the sidewalks? The developer. The developer. The developer has been very, very cooperative in this. You know, saying that that it wanted to be part of it. But but then again, you know, as we all know, it is it is the uh, um, the town is we're supposed to get our children to the schools. Sure. Um, you know, and they they really only have to. They really only have to get to Franklin Road as far as, as carpooling, but that's one of the issues that 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 that, that uh, Muriel saw is that there are like, at one point there are like thirty cars on one side of the road. Yeah, so so it is actually not a solution. There's a typo on our TV. It's not a solution to um, to carpool to Franklin Road. It's not. Right. It's frankly not. It is so unsafe at that corner, mm -hmm. um, standing there watching it. The only solution is to carpool to the schools. And I don't disagree that that is potentially, um, a th I, this is my perspective, listen to me talk, but um, there, I had to park down the road and tuck in at Western Nurseries to think that my car was safely parked and I wasn't, I wasn't presenting a hazard. There is no place to put vehicles um, to carpool and wait down there. Carpool and drop off is even, I think, problematic. Um, Amy, I just want to go around the table and make sure we get everything. Yeah, I had a few questions. Um, so it seems like it's been hard to get special town meetings in the past, so I wondered if the selectmen have specifically discussed this yet, whether they have appetite to call a special town meeting, and if not, can we ask them to put that on their agenda, if they should consider that? And two, if I were a town meeting voter, I would want to make sure I, there was documentation in writing about why, why all these other solutions won't work <coughs> before accepting the town road. So, because it's a very, um, the idea of just providing extra insurance for the bus is very appealing to me, and it seems like that would be fairly inexpensive. So I guess I'd want to see it do documented and written out that it was really more expensive than a special town meeting. Yeah. I, I don't disagree, um, yeah. and I was surprised to hear a really quick no, but I think that you're exactly right, that these sort of more short-term solutions that might might fix the problem in a, in a more... Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm not saying that the solution is necessarily to accept the road, um, and but we but there is a solution out there between sure. us. We can figure out something. Yeah. So I have a comment and a couple questions. The first comment is, if that corner is the safety issue, why not move up or down Franklin Road for the bus stop to get away from the corner with the traffic going? So I, I don't know if the traffic's on Franklin Road that's in issue. No, because that stops, right? The next it's, one would be 135. No, does it have to be a corner? The next corner. Does it have to be a corner? It doesn't have to be a corner. Well, the bus, comes, the bus comes out from Franklin Road and then can't go right because that's, well, I guess, where the no, private road like starts. Road. And then going left is, is 135. But they stop right at the corner. They could stop 200 feet before the corner or 200 feet after the corner on the side of the road. Franklin Road, where it meets um, Legacy Farms North, there's no sidewalk that goes down Franklin Road. So moving the, the bus stop down Franklin Road would put them on a, like a, basically a, no. a, a shoulder with no curb and things like that. So, um, you know, but that works be. in the spring, but doesn't really work in the winter um, from my perspective. And there's also, you know, a lot of kids, lots of kids, so. 
So thank you for that input and just commenting maybe a short term solution would build a short sidewalk. We're just throwing options out there, right? No, I, yep. I'm open to, I'm yeah. solution so, focused. Yeah. I want to make sure, hold on, we're going to go around the table. Yep. So that was my comment. The questions I have, maybe John can answer them or Meryl. So if the road was accepted, does the town... Hold on one yep, second. Can I entertain a motion to open and continue at the applicant's request the public hearing for 76 Main Street? What is, when do they want to be? They said September. We tentatively have it for September 9th, but we can do the second meeting in September as well. So I'm fine doing September 9th. Can I have a motion to open and continue the public hearing to September 9th? So moved. Second. Do we have to change a, okay. Um, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Thank do we, you. Sorry about that. Do we, do we have to state the time? We're not setting the time. Okay. Remember, we're trying that whole <laughs> new approach. Yes, but thank you for that. Seventy-six Main Street. Oh, so the applicant. I'm sorry. The applicant has requested a continuance, and we have continued it to September 9th. To do it for a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> we started. We started with a couple of months. <coughs> September 9th. Thank you. You're welcome. So, I'm not sure who to best answer this, but the question is. If the road is approved, Legacy Farms North, would the town be plowing the sidewalk? I don't know how far out the town does that. I know that my neighborhood doesn't get done. I don't know how far out away from schools. Who's, do they do, do they do Chamberlain? We don't have sidewalks. No sidewalks, okay. Don't even talk to me on North Street. So maybe that's something we need to follow up with, right? <laughs> who's, I mean, who's downtown? But so we, yes, we'll certainly ask that question. Because that's not going to do us any good to accept the road if the sidewalk's not plowed. Yeah. No, it will because they will get picked up at, near their clubhouse area. Or rather, they won't have to walk on Lake Farms North Road. They'll get picked it, up. It's still a, it's I still guess a, it's still an still open a question. question. But you're right. They will walk up. They, the bus would come up at the, the Spine Road and pick them up at the Oh, at each, one, at each neighborhood. And yeah, they so would, they'd be at each still neighborhood. still have to yeah. plow in there. So that's not as big a problem. The developer. Until mm -hmm. it's... But it would still be a lot of large a amount of kids area. at a corner where there's no sidewalk for them to stand on. Mm -hmm. The bus would stop traffic in both directions. Right. In that in that case, yes. and they would not be walking across uh, along the, the fast road. I I'm not saying yeah. it's it's necessarily yeah. the solution. Uh, the, and I, I we've had a lot of conversations, so I've been thinking about it. I, I just think. There needs to be Even a safe with place to wait. There's still an issue of the sidewalks are not done. Yes. That's my I I, I agree with you, Madam Chair. Just one point though, and I think. You brought this up earlier. Is it? Uh, I'm under the impression that the bigger safety issue is all the cars queuing, more than just the because at the end of the day the kids are on a sidewalk anyways. But right. what, but know, the, there are the cars that are lined but up. But the cars are actually parked half on the sidewalk, yes. half on the street, facing the wrong direction. Yes. So um, it is a big piece of the puzzle. I also acknowledge that I got feedback that those sidewalks are not necessarily plowed for the morning walk to the bus stop. Uh, they ha he has to do them, and that is, a, that is a piece to follow up on, and potentially he has to do them by four o'clock in the morning so that you know they're done before the kids are walking them to the first round, but that's just a piece of the solution too. But most of Hockington doesn't have sidewalks and the buses still pick up kids. Yes. Or sidewalks, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I was But our right. kids are not walking 135 or Hayden Road yeah. to do it. Right. But if they, they only had to walk on the side streets, the Primrose and Lilac, right. then I, then I think the main then Legacy Farms North does not necessarily have to be plowed because they're only going to be on the side streets. Right. I I think it's an important question. Are we picking up, you know, snow removal and, and snow removal on the sidewalks sure. and 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 uh, but I don't I agree. <laughs> and one additional comment that I just thought of with that being a lid development which I strongly suggested is not a good idea on a main road. There's no curb there, so it really is kind of not any protection from the cars coming off to the side of the road onto the sidewalk. But that's just a comment to move on. Um, what I want to ask also is what would be left to, John, you mentioned it would, we'd have to like um, write in a lot of stuff if we got the road approved, conditioned it. What, wouldn't it just be putting the top slate on the 
on the road? What else is left to be done? No, no there's also, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I was about to say to the chair. Uh, there's also the, the, the trees and, and the, um, okay. And the, little, and the grassy grassy areas in between the the, the buffer. So it's landscaping. Top so yeah. So they did. Yeah. So there'd be all the landscaping and okay. everything else also. Right. Mayor, my turn. Okay. So just uh, again, I'm, I'm going to be restating some of this just so you know we're t we've been talking about a lot of things. So cars queuing. There's there's clearly no parking there at the corner of Legacy Farms North and Franklin Road for. Um, for parents to um, park their cars while their kids are getting on the bus or, or to let the kids wait in cars, um, which is, you know, obviously in bad weather, that's what happens. Um, and repeating what the, what the, um, the residents there who we, we saw on one site walk, um, they, they are carpooling as much as they can right now. Um, but there are, and I was, I was frantically looking for the presentation that was yeah. presented to the, the um, select board. I can't, can't give it it's, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> at the moment. But there, the number of kids, um, I just wanted to point out, Frank, because um, you mentioned a shelter for them and things like that, which all good idea. But these, th this is a larger than the number of kids that would fit in a typical bus shelter, <laughs> for instance. It's it's a large number of children. Forty one for marathon, twenty twenty six. So it's one hundred eighteen children total as of April. Mm -hmm. So forty one for marathon school, twenty six Elmwood, seventeen Hopkins, fifteen middle, eight high school. So the forty one for marathon is the big. Yeah, and that's big, that's big the big issue. one clearly. And those are the age kids, um, you know, in, in first grade, the kindergarten, first grade, who, who you wouldn't just expect to go to the bus stop by themselves and mm. wait by themselves. So the cars, the parents need to be there, um, you know, even if they walk from home, which it, it is more than you know a short walk. <laughs> it is a bit of a walk. Um, and so I just want I just wanted to reiterate, you know, some of the there's been some things thrown around and so I just wanted to make it very clear to people what we have heard from the residents and what we have seen when we were up there. Um, so there's no there's no real parking there <coughs> on Franklin, on Legacy Farms North, or there's no cross streets nearby that they could pull into. There's simply no parking there. So they have to do the kind of half onto the the grass next to the sidewalk that's it's no other option um the kids safety waiting and boarding is um is as big a concern as the cars um because as um muriel mentioned earlier because the the traffic is not stopping for the bus loading the traffic does not stop on legacy farms north and we did explore, we did talk about some possible ways that that could change. I don't know if those have gone anywhere. And I'm looking at both you, John and Muriel, in, in your conversations besides this, there was talk about can the bus pull forward into Legacy Farms North Road in order to affect Stopping a stop of traffic. Like buses, like you know, if buses stopping along Highway 85. Obviously, every everybody stops in both directions, but um, that is one possible thing, and you know that's, that would help in the short term. It could help in the short term. Where, if I if I may interrupt, one of the issues is that the kids would be getting on the bus where the cars are coming down, so the kids would actually be having to be walk onto Legacy Farms Road North. You know, halfway up to get on there, and if somebody didn't stop, it's you know, That's it'd, it'd true. Be That's one true. of those things that I don't know if the bus company would want to do it. You know, and and because, but I remember as a, as a, as a kid when the buses stopped, that little arm came out so the kids wouldn't yeah. walk in front of the bus. You know, maybe if they had a really long one that stuck out. I know it sounds know. kind of crazy. Really long. But but that's why that's why we're trying to get the. Um, get a police officer up there because you know, he would stop and he would hold the traffic up yeah. while the kids got on. But, but again, that's, that, that, that's an expensive, expensive solution, solution too. At all. Yeah, I mean, to have them there for every single time the bus gets there or even, even you know. The it's three and three, three two. in the morning, three in the afternoon. Yeah, so, um, okay. So the kids' safety is, is a big thing. I also think, you know, even with plowing of sidewalks, there's always mounds of snow 
um, before you get to the road that you're usually having to walk over and, and things like that. And, and with so many kids, you know, they can't all fit on the sidewalk, basically, you know, they're doing their best. Um, but I, I understand the short-term possibility of them carpooling to school, but I think that uh, I, I just have a question about us basically requiring that, you know? It just, it just doesn't seem right. So, so okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's, that's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. Patrick. Uh, more just comments. Um, just kind of piggyback off what you just said, the last thing, to require residents to carpool is absurd. It's up to the town to provide safety for the kids. It's not up to me. And put that extra burden on some families who can't carpool or take other kids and that responsibility, liability on with that. So that shouldn't be an option at all. If they're carpooling on their own, that's fine. But uh, I think working, like you said earlier with the developer, if he's hiring a private bus, you know, that, that's a short-term issue. Or how much the insurance, as Amy said, the extra insurance, the cost of that for the liability. Is that possible? The school committee told us, so this came to my attention for the first time at um, candidates' debate. And I went to the mic and asked that question, why don't we just pay extra insurance? Um, and both the candidates that are, were currently on the select board and the candidate that was on the school committee said, nope, we tried that. And the bus company won't accept additional insurance to do that. I, I don't know all the particulars yeah. or that, that's, that's the impression that I was under. That's why I, I, when I heard right. you say that, I was like, oh my gosh, they're entertaining that? That would be a, that would be a major solution. Mm -hmm. right. that, would, that would be the solution. Yeah. Right. I and agree. then we could wait the three years right. or whatever it is That's to finish That's the one that jumped into my head the, the, the quickest and the fastest. Mm -hmm. but it, I guess with, uh, if it's been past practice <laughs> in the town to approve these streets with conditions on it, then you should do it. Well, one of the things that, that if you just noticed in the last three years, we've accepted a lot of roads in um, developments that have been done for 10, 20, 30 years that they just were forgotten. Are you here for um, 76 Main Street? It has been continued to September. Just so you're welcome to stay. I know it's an entertaining. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, John. Um, you know, and, and that's and, you know, and and buses have been going into those developments not knowing that we hadn't accepted those roads. Right. And I think it's just because this one was the, the fanfare of of it not being accepted that they just said, oh, wait a minute. But you know, so some of these roads that, that we just, even some of the ones we just did this, this past, uh, I think we had, to, we had to cross some T's and dot some I's uh, at, at the last uh, board meeting. Um, but some of these roads haven't been, weren't accepted, but nobody knew it. it was, they still a trash pickup, town plowed them, town did everything, people just didn't know. It's kind of like they live in Hopkinton or paying taxes. Exactly. Um, yes, so, uh, so um, I, I have confidence that the major boards in town that have ownership of this issue, so no one board, that's part of the problem that the residents are facing is that they are diligently going from place to place. And I think that people are trying to work the issue, but it's just nothing, no solution is coming to the top and nothing is sticking. Um, so that was part of my, my hope in the conversation with the chairman of the select board and the chairman of the school committee. And, um, there is no commitment to a particular kind of solution. I don't want to represent that, but there is certainly a commitment to um, working together to find a solution. Um, one of the things that we, so we're having this grand conversation about options and ideas <coughs> and possibilities, which is excellent. Um, but if we were going to try and um, accept the road, right? Something that sort of strikes me as pragmatic and constructive and, and fixes it for all time. Um, the first thing we really need to do is speak to the DPW and the professional staff at town. They have to tell us mm -hmm. whether it's even a possibility and it is a little bit different for sure than what we have done before. Mm -hmm. So to be honest with you, I think that that's our next step. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and I, I wanna make sure we get last thoughts um, no, no practical short-term solution should be ignored either. Um, so I'm, I, it's not that I'm not open to um, a police officer stopping traffic, or if it's, you know, if, you know, or, or, um, I, you know, I liked the idea 
first I thought of the bus pulling out, which is a, what happens actually. Um, my kids happily got picked up at the end of my driveway, I know. <laughs> Um, but when a new development came in across the road, it presented a little bit of a hazard because the bus came out right where my kids were waiting at the end of the driveway. So they actually had to pull back, which is fine, because people would zip around the bus seeing it coming um, straight up into my driveway um, to, to zip around. But the bus would pull out and actually stop traffic on North Street. But it's a smaller street. Right. And um, it's, I, don't think, I don't think that dynamic necessarily works there. Right, and that, it, it, you know, to, to that point, you know, when people, when, when the, the police officer was stopping people going over 50 miles an hour, you know, if, if it was wet or there's somebody hydroplaned or just uh, some black ice and, and you know, it would be, uh, but I just really appreciate, thank you so much for putting it on no, the agenda. Sorry. Oh, sorry. We're gonna go for last yeah. thought. Oh, yeah, I just sorry. wanna go back. So from a yeah. process issue, then we're effectively going to request from our, from DPW and from, I guess I just want to clarify what our yeah. next steps are. Because it yeah. sounds like mm -hmm. our request is like, well, what would those conditions need to be if we were to accept the road? I would like to, to know if it's road? possible, right? Yeah. Can we do it? And what do we have to do to do it in this scenario? Okay, so we'll ask them that question, yeah. and then they will come back to us, us or a combination of the select board and the planning no, board. No, no, I think committee. it's a, yeah. No, you guys, the, you, this is the, the this is the brain trust to handle. No, this is the planning board. <laughs> You know, no, I actually, right. I do think that, um, you know, we did, we, not us, not us sitting on this board, but we as a town, we as an entity, the planning board was a big piece, uh, rightly so, of all the planning out there. Um, and we intentionally planned that road and we intentionally built it first and we intentionally had the ribbon cutting so we would offload traffic. Um, and I don't think we thought about the implications um, of the school bus issues. And I think that we need to give that some Okay. Before, so before you go for final thoughts, can I ask one quick question? Yeah. Um, if we accept, if we do accept the road, is it possible to keep the bond? Oh yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, oh, you're, yes. you're, you're yeah, really, we wouldn't it, accept it without a bond. Right. Yeah. And the, the developer already, already yeah. agreed to that. But go ahead, Gary. I'm sorry. What? No. I just, so, so just the DPW and the planning department will come back to us. I think the there. professional staff has to tell yep. us if it's yep. possible. Okay. That's really I just want to clarify that that's, that's where we'll go from here and that it sounds like there's reasonable alignment that the planning board will yep. help shepherd this process. Because, I, because you know, the DPW and, and, and the professionals in the, in the town where you have to think outside the box also because this is something we never thought of. This being one of the biggest developments in Metro West, um, our, bylaws weren't ready for something like this you know it was you no know, who, who expects a a, a a for a development to take you know five or ten years to uh yeah. to be built out and that's why it, this one this one is a is a hybrid to begin with so and just one of the requests then for our professional staff is that they just make sure to keep the select board and the school committee informed of their recommendations as well because they are important so you can, you i i actually think that um that we, we need to be really active about this. This is just a little bit complicated, and, and I, I fully agree with that, that we have to make sure that as we're exploring you know, different alternatives, this being one of them, uh, that, that's, that everybody is feeling comfortable as we go along. Should right. we have DCW at our next meeting? So I, when, when I was rereading the minutes for this, for this meeting, we had talked about that, and then we didn't invite them, I guess, but I think that, uh, I, I wrote down an action item to speak to John Westerling at the top of the, this discussion, and uh, maybe we can get together and just have a conversation and see what needs to happen from their perspective next, um, and certainly put them on the agenda for the next meeting if that's what makes the most sense going forward. So, Frank, did you have last thoughts? I'll go after Amy. Maybe oh, Amy, go ahead. Okay. I did, one random thought I had was for a short-term solution, could they put a crossing guard out there with the kids? I don't think that's fairly inexpensive. And then the other one is for the action items. I think we need to directly ask the selectmen to put this on the agenda to discuss. Because I, I watched the citizens come to the, the select board meeting and, and speak at public comment, but that's a frustrating situation because the selectmen can't respond because it wasn't on the agenda. Yeah, I had actually so, um, asked someone to do that i and i had asked and it was it was left off okay all right uh, so um yeah we will make a formal request for that okay thank you yeah so yes um 
one thing, some maybe things people don't know is that the software that the school uh, uses for the bus routes it changes every year, uh, but it's an incredible algorithm and based on the students and where they're going. And uh, this year they could be coming down at Franklin, getting picked up. If nothing changes next year, they could, the bus could be going the other way. It depends on the software. Um, but we're looking for a longer term solution. Um, and we shouldn't be caught surprised if, if, say, things change, as we are a little bit caught by surprise by the additional students. Uh, we did plan it in a, in a way that, well, if we get so many students in the system, we'll get extra money, which we'll use to deal with problems like this. Uh, but I don't think well, we, never planned, we never planned on the road. That was that. that, that this one, this one was. It's as I said, it's a hybrid. It's, it's an X factor. Yeah. No, we also we also did deal with the southern side, south side, and they had similar issues. They have similar issues still with traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so we should also probably give some consideration to maybe that side of the of the puzzle too. Um, but in, at the end of the day, I'm glad. I'm that sorry. Is is that. Is Legacy Farm South an accepted road mm -hmm. down there? Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're all accepted now. But they still have some issues. Okay. Um, so we can learn from that. What did we do there uh, back in the day when John was on the planning board? Um, but I'm glad that we're all working together. Uh, I think the town is the best when we work together. Our boards are strong together. Um, it's going to take a combination of the developer and the school committee and it's like board, the neighbors themselves, and the whole town if, if, if it comes to it. Um, so I, I think that we're on the right path forward, and I, I think that uh, we'll find a solution. Uh, one more thing, that when we had Franklin Road, the original Franklin Road that going that way, they specifically designed Legacy Road North <coughs> to slow down traffic to and from Franklin Road. So I don't know if it's because of the bus stop idea, but it does give some level of safety from the faster traffic on Legacy, um, Legacy North. I'm so sorry, what is the safety factor? The way the Franklin Road's cut in, it, 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 the original Franklin Road it was all the way to, to 135, and now Franklin Road stops at Legacy North, and it's a, uh, I'm it's not pretty, sure what that pretty is. Close it, right pretty close to a right angle. They recut Main Street. It's pretty close to a right angle. It's close to a right angle. Yeah, it's, it is a slightly different intersection, but it is not a safety feature in that situation. They said it was slow down traffic at the time. So if we move the bus stop from Franklin Road, Franklin Road, to Legacy North, Franklin Road, uh, it's kind of a dead man's curve there a little bit, a blind spot, maybe not safer. Uh, but there might be spaces for parking because uh, there had been a wetland area which caused a lot of problems for that intersection anyways in the past. Um, but if, if parking's an issue, that might be a possible short-term solution. I don't even know where you're talking I'm about. I'm not sure where you're talking about either. It's, um, I, I had to look for a place to put my car. Yes, yeah, yeah, we're not no, but I don't. I don't think like a I don't trail think type of parking lot. I don't six think there's a cars. place. I don't think there's a place. I really don't. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's a wide. There's a, there's a wide grassy area and everything else, but that, but that's on the other side of the sidewalk, and, and that would make it even more crazy. Yeah. Want to go get it first or no? What's up? So I just, just in thinking this. through all this. I, I just I'll wanted to make I'll see how this goes over. But a distinction. I think with us discussing all the short-term solutions are a great idea, but I really think that falls in the domain of the selectmen. And I think we should, let me finish, I think we should focus on getting the road accepted as soon yeah. as possible. I think, because we're a zoning committee, I think that's what we should focus I on. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just my yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 I agree. I was actually thinking the same thing. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and the other part of it was that, um, um, I would like to, you know, when we hear back from the DPW and towns, town um, professional staff, um, I'd like to understand your estimated timing of how long it's going to take. You know, it's like we, we need to, obviously, planning board needs to approve it, and then the town meeting, special town meeting, et cetera. I also want us to, um, you know, communicate with the, uh, the school committee because um, I would like to see us line up the changes for the bus route, which you were alluding to, um, 
so that it can take place and it can become effective as soon as the special town meeting approves this mm -hmm. so that we don't have approval at special town meeting and then another six month gap or something like that okay and then um, based on all of that you know then the interim solution that I know that the developer is very willing to work with us on and, and hopefully the select board can can focus on that piece is that if you, you will will know a time frame that the interim solution would need to be in place you know whatever that interim solution mm -hmm. comes to be okay Perfect. that's me I just quick uh, just get the main players involved in getting this road accepted as soon as possible that's the, I just the only to, comment I have on it. yeah thank you guys um, I just want to make sure that um, I I am a proponent of exploring this idea of accepting the road for sure um, I don't necessarily know that it is uh, it is a the best solution or, or even a solution. So I really think that um, I want to encourage us all to be open to whatever the feedback is from the professional staff um, as to what the, the best plan is going forward to tackle this. So, um, so it seems like the thinking to me is constructive thinking to uh, find a way to accept the road and solve the problem that way. And that's the, in many ways, it seems like the neatest, quickest, most permanent solution. Um, but I think the best, um, the best way forward is to engage the professional staff to come up with um, short-term, interim, long-term ideas, solutions in the pathway um, that makes the best sense forward. So it, it may not be accepting the road on an accelerated path. Um, it may be something else. So I think, I think that um, certainly um, the school committee and the, the select board chairs um, are both open to constructive ideas as I can see that we are as well so that's really I think that the mm -hmm. really now we're at the first place somebody needs to direct the professional staff to give us guidance um, and I'm happy enough to have that be the planning board I think it makes sense excellent thank okay. you very much thanks for your time really this is, it's an important uh, uh, subject and, and and the people of uh, Legacy Farms North uh, I know we'll be very appreciative of it. So thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Really, I, you gave it a lot of diligence. Yeah, well, we need to move the ball, right? Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, thanks John. John. Thanks for all you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, all right. Uh, yes, down to the administrative. Uh, trails coordination. We. Did we already? We I think already, we appointed you. Yes, we? I'm so good. We, I think we can take. <laughs> yes, we did appoint. Oh, we, we did. Discussed because we discussed. it wasn't on the agenda. That we appoint. I will entertain a motion to appoint Dave Paul to the I'm trail. Sorry. Actually, I take that back. Okay. The planning board doesn't appoint. Mm. It's a recommendation to the select board to appoint. That's I recommend that we send Dave forward to the board of the select board to appoint for continued work on the trails committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're going to take that one off the agenda for, the, for another year. I'll abstain from that one. Um, we did the design review board. Um, I think we should do a quick update on that, and then we will no longer need it on the agenda for 495. If that's the next oh, one. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, actually, Mural and Gary and I attended the state um, uh, presentation and they came up with their final alternative which actually is kind of good news for us because the final alternative before it was a 50 foot high highway at the top and now the current uh, proposal is a 30 foot 35 foot so um, the max. 15 15 foot reduction in the height so which will be great news for the neighbors ar around there um, what else? There so are public forums coming up. Do we have those dates? I know they're in our packet. July 25th, so Thursday. Thursday. At Hopkinton Town Hall at 6 30. In the basement? In the basement. Okay, so this Thursday, the 25th, the town hall basement at 6 30. Yes. Public uh -huh. forum for the 495 90 interchange improvements. And just a quick update if you look at the intersection from north south, the, uh, the northeast quadrant is just going to have a, a quick access ramp to 495 45 north. The northwest section will have no ramps at all. The southeast section will have only a quick access ramp. And then there's going to, the southwest section is going to have major uh, connections to all 
of them. And they're going to be utilizing the, that current toll booth area because mm -hmm. they own all that property. They have access to it, and, and there's going to be um, going to be um, routes that are divided, so it won't be a lot of crisscrossing or anything or weaving. Mm -hmm. So, and another thing that came up uh, in the one before you guys attended um, was that the in the toll plaza that's going to be adjacent to the existing homes in the Roosevelt neighborhood. And they've told us that they are required by federal law to do sound uh, mitigation studies. Um, there's a lot of technical jargon that I didn't completely understand, but there, it's a certain type of project that requires a certain type of study to assess the noise levels and, stuff and all that information. So they will be doing that, and that's going to take place during the um, environmental review, the DEIR portion, which is in like a few months. That's a very swampy area anyways, too. I'm sorry? Peter Swamp. Yep. Yep. So state's well, first area of environmental approval, environmental concern. Yes. Just a couple of observations from, from going to that, that review. Um, like everything, it's way more complicated than any of us imagine. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually think they've done a pretty comprehensive job of thinking through a lot of different factors. I mean, whether it be the environmental concerns or the, the, um, the, the construction plan and how they deal with traffic and how they can try to keep as many lanes open as possible, the, the abutters, you know, the costs. Um, I, I was personally, I think, I thought they did a, a very comprehensive job of assessing options. Um, and, you know, at, at the, 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 the top of their priority was safety, which means, you know, um, eliminating the people merging and people exiting at the, at the same time. Um, and then the other thing I'd say is just from a, from a connector perspective, um, they said that, that all of the connectors have roughly, and the, the, the connectors themselves have roughly double the capacity of what they're anticipating them for the 2040 design process. So um, I just thought those were- Yeah, and just to add on to what Gary was saying, the presentation they gave was a, at the very end was a computerized video. And it was really cool. I mean, it, you were in the car going all these different directions and seeing how everything would look. And uh, one other thing I forgot to mention, um, at the end of the meeting, after we, the discussion for that intersection was over, I brought up the possibility of some, you know, commuter type ramps on the 135 and Mass Pike intersection, but um, that is pretty much, you know, not an option. So, um, in, in, and actually that's a good way for me to summarize here. I think I asked for this to be on our agenda and I am comfortable now with taking you off because we've done some research, we've, we've uh, seen some presentations, and I'm comfortable taking you off. I don't know if anybody else wanted to keep it on or not. Maybe we can keep it on until after Thursday's meeting at least, and we can, whoever's ten staff could give us a report back. They haven't seen that. Okay, Plans, sounds right. good. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, Fruit Street Bridge is still <laughs> replacing? Yes. I was just gonna say, Fruit Street is gonna be a bit of a tangle for a line. Uh, because um, one section of the Fruit Street Bridge is, is uh, going to be undertaken soon. The railroad crossing. Yes, the railroad mm -hmm. crossing. In Southboro, so it'll be right. shut down. Completely separate project. And then, How do do that? and then, and then, <laughs> this project will start. At least so Fruit Street, Fruit Street is a, Fruit Street is an open issue, how that's going to be managed um, and how traffic is going to handle that for a long time. And, and John Westerly from the DPW brought up the option of, could there be a, an emergency access off of 495 onto um, Fruit Street for emergency purposes so they wouldn't have to wind and go up Saddle Hill Road? And that was not an option because of the steepness of the grade. <coughs> yes, but there was some hmm. option that is being considered that the fire chief brought up that might allow, well, as part of the project, completed project, access, quicker access to that corner. I, I misspoke. It wasn't John from EPW. It was Steve from the fire there department. Is he some, was the one. There is some piece that they left open to consider, though. I can't remember. I, I don't remember the they, details. They had, they, I think they kind of shot down the, the emergency exit onto Fruit Street, but they mentioned they might be able to do it down on Wood Street closer, and I, I think that Steve didn't see a lot of the damage to that. But. But they were definitely open. They were definitely open. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason they're replacing the Fruit Street Bridge? Uh, I, is it Which one? The Fruit the Street bridge. bridge? No, the car driving bridge. It, it has to be wider for all the new um, so exits into that toll area. 
exit and entrances. Okay. So, so they have to widen the road in parts, and where the abutments are doesn't allow them to do that. And then, secondly, they're actually um, I mean, one of the objectives is on the the merger on the the ramp on the 495 south. Um, you know, you come down a hill, you got a sharp turn, you got to go up mm -hmm. a hill. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to smooth that out, both with in terms of radius and in terms of grade, so that the trucks don't need to slow down as much before they try and merge or going uphill. But, uh, I guess my question is, uh, Fruit Street, the, where we drive and have homes, is that bridge going to be replaced? Right. Yes. Right, because the road that's going passing underneath it is going to be wide. 492 needs to be wider. The abutments are in locations that don't allow for the necessary oh, yeah. Yeah. Not the highway itself, but the exit and entrance ramps are going to come down further yeah. towards Fruit Street. Seems like a big project. It's a big project. I think it was 250 million or something like that. Well, that's just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> and to add to um, that, big day. they brought up the, the pipeline that we're going to review tonight is extending into Westboro, and that's going to be constructed at the same about the same time. Uh, so the traffic circle in this is going to be severely affected by that and then possibly this. Oh my goodness. At the same time, I might move out of Metro. <laughs> Within the same window. I might have to move as well. It might be time to down <laughs> Yeah, through the chair. Did they give a time frame for the Fruit Street Bridge? They did, and I don't remember. I think it was it two was. I think it was two years. Two years of the bridge would be disrupted. So they, there's only like I live on that side of town, so there's really only three ways there's through Westboro Center, there's Fruit Street, and there's Saddle Hill Road to get yep. where you need to go. Or you could backtrack to 495 here. Yep. But uh, if Westboro Center and Fruit Street Bridge have impacted traffic situations at the same time, Saddle Hill Road is going to be just way more traffic than that can handle. So I don't know if we can do much or what we should think Certainly. about doing. Right. Certainly more traffic than, than it can handle safely. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so more of a statement. I don't. I don't know how well, how we can impact things in that regards. Um, so you you know, as a resident and as a board, we can always um, we can always provide feedback. Not every, you know, whatever studies they've done. I think they've done a very credible job. The presentation was excellent, and I, I don't know if they're also talking to the pipeline people, right? Just to it doesn't they hurt work. that yeah it doesn't hurt to just make sure that people understand that there's there's a level of commuting along fruit street that i don't know if if people really understand but maybe they do maybe they've sat out there and measured it but. there's a lot of ways people that don't come off saddle hill going on to fruit street eight nine ten cars and they're all the ways will be direct so i did i did bring up at the meeting about if they've done a traffic study on fruit street because yeah you know, they're going to be working on that bridge and they said they had not gotten to it yet but I think it was in the plans. So it's, it's going to be a, a, a big project and a bit of a, a bit of an imposition for quite some time but hopefully excellent when it's done. In 2027. In 2027. I, I know that uh, timelines change but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the timing of the downtown corridor project and in relation to all of this work? Um, so the downtown corridor project starts next spring. Okay. I uh, don't do you know how long it's predicted to go. I don't off the top of my head know how long it's predicted to go. It's at least two years. At least two years. So that would, if it was two years, it would go until. I, I think they said through, through two summers. Two summers, at okay. least. So. It start, yeah, it's starting right after the marathon. And the Fruit Street project, what did John say, the railroad br bridge, when is that starting? I don't know. I thought he said that. I thought so, too. So those two might be going we'll at practice. the same time. We'll practice. Yeah. We'll see how And long then the 495-90 whole thing. 22 to 27. Okay. Okay, so, so we may we well be on. done with our downtown first. Yes, before that project, but not before the railroad bridge. On right. The yeah. I, I don't know if they explained this in the second one, but they they said that the 495-90 interchange project will be done in phases for some to some extent. So it's not like all of, of it's going to be impacted, but yeah, right. yeah but it's still going to impact right. we'll us. Have, it's for not going to just be the entire intersection. It's going to be impacted. Of, of the options they were considering, um, this option was the. I'm trying to think of the words they use. 
but it was, it was the least expensive. It was the fastest. Um, least intrusive. Least yeah. intrusive yeah. on the environment. Um, and was as good as the others with regards to, to traffic mitigation. And I think they, in total, they assessed, um, I feel like 30 some different options or considerations. They narrowed it down to the top three, and then this was the, the, the clear preferred option of those three. And they went through a full criteria with a you know, methodology of, of, of how this one, you know, both numerically and their own assessments, how this one bubbled up to the top. And Representative uh, Carolyn Dicamo was there as well. Yep. So good. Perfect. You know what, Dave, thank you for bringing that up and, and holding on to that. Um, it turned out to be perfect that we talked about it and you set, it, set us up, you teed us up really well on that. Thanks and for I having appreciate me. that. <laughs> um, okay. Um, we did the minutes. What is the process for the review of invitation for bids? It's just to get your input on the scope. There doesn't have to be any formal process. Right. So it's not public? Um, it's, it's not confidential. It's just no not offense to fill. But if beta were to go for this uh, contract again, we didn't want to make it seem like they're getting a, a advanced <laughs> shot at the contract versus okay. another firm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I read it today um, and I thought it looked good, so I don't have any changes to offer. I have no comments. It's in line with what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Didn't surprise me. Yeah. Okay. So, good. is that all you needed from us? Yep. Okay. Um, what about Seaboard Solar preliminary introduction? So Pedro is here. If you want to present? He was just going to give an introduction. Perfect. Um, so this is. A solar concept plan that's on the Liberty Mutual site. He can explain in more detail uh, in the professional office district. He just wanted to give a con conceptual overview, five minutes, uh, just to introduce the project to you. Hi. Um, Pedro Rodriguez from Seaboard Solar. We are a real estate developer as well as, well as a, a solar, commercial solar developer that have been doing business in Massachusetts for almost 10 years. Um, we are in the process of per, uh, buying the Liberty Mutual site. Um, it was brought to us by one of our brokers, not for um, solar intentions, but mostly for real estate. We are finalizing the deal and we're gonna be, the idea is that we're gonna be buying the entire property, so the building along with the other two parcels, plus a small one in Iceland. And we have an idea what to do um, with the 50 acre property that is right next to the building. Um, so one of the ideas that we have is maybe doing a, um, a commercial solar facility. Um, the plan that I passed around um, that one is just looking at maximizing uh, the entire property. That is not um, what we have in mind. Um, that does not uh, follow um, the regulations of the bylaw. We understand the, um, the frontage needed, um, the open space regulations. Uh, we understand that there are some residents uh, nearby and we are uh, also looking into reducing, reducing the system overall to increase uh, the buffer to add extra screening, um, something that the uh, system won't be visible from uh, Franklin Street unless you are already um, inside the building. Um, and I, my understanding is that that 50 acre parcel is divided between the zoning district of the agricultural and also the office, uh, professional offices, which I think that's the zoning district for the Liberty Mutual building. And we're looking to follow the regulations if we do the solar array um, for the agricultural district, just because it's more restrictive. Yes, right. So, for clarification. Yep. The front section 
is the current building or part of it, and the back section is the the backwoods, including the test track. Uh, correct. The idea is that we're going to be using the entrance or the existing driveway that's on the left of the building, and a portion of the driveway will be located where the test drive is right now. So the building, the array. So drive, separate driveway. Y yeah, we'll be using the existing driveway, but then we're going to be extending it into the woods kind of thing. I see. So the building is staying and um, no solar, you're not putting solar panels also on the roof of the building? No, this is not feasible for the roof of the building. Why not? It doesn't. Uh, there's not enough space and a lot of portion of the building has a lot of equipment and it's concave too. Uh, we looked at it and it's just now. Um, and the building's going to be professional uses? You mean like yeah, rent, renting it for companies? Yeah, prof a professional use. We're speaking to some brokers right now to see what can we, um, you know, what kind of prospective tenants we can have in the building. Um, so, you know, we're about to sign the contract. We have a due diligence period and you, we're just trying to see what we can do. It's a great building. building. I, uh, I'm glad something good is happening. This is, is a really nice property. Question to the chair. So, so how much total land are you going to be clearing? Or are you proposing that you would clear for this? We're going to be, uh, the, if we use this entire array right here, that would be about 30 acres. That's not what we plan to do. That probably is going to be reduced to about 20 acres. 20 acres. So, you're going to, so it's currently 20 acres of wooded property. No, uh, it's currently about 50 acres of wooded property, just in that parcel. But, but, in the back. but you would be clearing approximately 20 acres of wooded property that, that is for this. Correct. 30.58. Yeah, 30.58 is like the existing design uh, right now, but that doesn't follow all the setback, doesn't follow all the, uh, the frontage, none of that regulation, so that's going to be reduced quite a bit. Is there a reason you didn't initially do it following the setbacks? Um, it's just the, the steps that we follow our companies. So we do the, the surveys, we send it to the electrical design, Kind of see how, how how can we maximize um, the current property right now without looking at certain restrictions, and then we we'll reduce it according to the regulations and extra according to the neighborhood. Okay. So we're not even looking at something that meets our bylaws. Um, no, as you can see, a portion of it. Okay. It's going to be a lot smaller than that. Yes, absolutely. Um, question actually first, you say utility pole set up. Is that telephone poles you're talking speaking of on the very top right? That will be, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Just so you know, our bylaws require on everything on your ground, unless, Correct. unless it's a special circumstance. So we, we, we feel strongly about that, too, just to give you a heads up. Anybody else have anything quick? It's just a preliminary. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I want to drive on the test track before it's gone. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so we still have a few minutes. There's flying through stuff. Look at us go. Well, the, the meeting opened way up, right? Right. But that's good. Through the chair? Uh, yes. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to um, request that the next meeting, the one in August, that um, we do the appointments for um, Zoning Advisory Committee. So we would not advertise that yet to see how many right. days we have. Okay. <coughs> yeah, so John has already, um, you know, given us a heads up that everybody needs to, everybody who isn't on a longer term cycle. Like, um, what? Membership. Yes. In him. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah it is, it you know, needs to submit their, their, um, um, uh, their memo to you know if they want to re up. Okay. And but we need to adver advertise for the new. I think we talked about. Do we need to advertise since it's it's an appointed board by the planning board, but it's more of a designee board. We it's always a, advertise it in yeah. the past, and we just like the selectmen. Yeah. We always advertise it at a point. So I think we need to stick to that. Yeah. So many of the current members are liaison members. And the at-large members, I believe, are all on two, year, two or three-year terms, and that would be Madhu, Elise, and Carol. Um, but um, the rest of the members currently, um, 
is Rhea an at-large member? I think uh, she was. Absolutely. She chose to be a one-year. I remember that. Um, we have Ron from the Chamber of Commerce. So myself from Planning Board, and yeah. so. and then John from the Select Board. So yeah, so uh, four other boards that appoint, we we wouldn't have to advertise. Right. So right. I can read through who's up this year. So from Conservation, Ted Barker Hook. The Planning Board rep is Mary. Uh, the Board of Appeals rep is Peggy Shaw. Mm -hmm. oh, Two at large are John Catino and Rhea. And the Chamber of Commerce is Ron. So I believe it would really only be the two. Yeah, two at large. Okay. Two at large. Right. And we should, re as a matter of process, we should reappoint Mary from the planning. Right, but I don't believe we need to advertise. No, I don't think no. so either. So it would just be advertising for those two at large positions. Okay. Right. And they are one year positions? No, I believe because we were starting. I at believe they're two year positions. Two -year positions. It does not say, so I'd have to check. Yeah, we'll so I think check, we started sure it last too. year, and we had to, so that we would have um, maybe staggering rotating. Rotating. Mm -hmm. yeah. We started with one year and two years, and then they will go all go to two year positions, so that they'll rotate. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, we can so, find out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and do, do we um, tell the other boards that appoint people? Do we, you know, just like remind them that it? Yeah, totally. That, yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Okay. That would be great if you could do that with all the other boards, because the terms end at the end of August. So we have we have one Zach meeting in August, and then in September we have to have our new members. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then just as a courtesy, those two members know that they are. Yes. Up, so okay. Yeah, we discussed sure. well. We discussed it at our last meeting, and I've sent out an email. Um, but I'll I can double check. Yeah, just make sure <laughs> that they know so that they neither know one of them is present to the meeting. So, uh, okay. so yeah, excellent <laughs> idea. Make sure they know. Um, just as a courtesy, so if they want to continue, they put their names in. Okay. All right. Thanks. Perfect. Um, how about this? Does anybody have any future agenda items that they would like to add on? I do. Yeah. Just a quick question about sidewalks. I wonder. Sidewalks. Yeah. And do you need anybody here for that? No. Nope. Okay. Sidewalks for Dave next time. I like it. Um, we are getting very full on the August twelfth agenda. <laughs> no, this this is this is like an uh, item to be discussed at any point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk us through the app. Like it seems we have a few minutes. Walk us through the twelfth agenda, as we know it. And only one meeting in August, everybody. Keep that thought. Almost August. Wow, it's stormy. Like the thunder for effect on that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes. Yeah. So we have the Whisperway uh, applications, and I can go over the proposed plan for that for everybody if you want. That's a good idea, but we'll list list out the agenda and then sure. do that. Sure. Sure. So Whisperway. Yep. Zero Wood Street, the Solar. Yep. Uh, Buckland Leonard. <laughs> The trails, uh, site plan, and special permit amendments. 97 South Street, minor site plan amend amendment. Uh, and the scenic road application for Saddle Hill Road uh, from DPW and growth study committee interviews and appointments. That's start, a big start meeting. At 6 PM. <laughs> What's the Saddle Hill thing real quickly? So that's, uh, what road, Saddle Hill and what road? Fruit Street. There's DPW wants to cut some trees down oh, okay. uh, for sight lines. Okay, thanks. So John Westerland will put all those cars speeding by from ways. If he mm. wants to build his own access Harumph. road to 495. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, 97 South Street. I know. Okay. Yes, we have six or seven minutes to give us the quick overview on uh, Whisperway. So Whis So Ron. Muriel, myself, and uh, Dan Hazen uh, met to discuss the project. And after some concerns about the voting and how it's really, he's kind of down to almost the required amount for uh, eligible members. He's considering uh, submitting a new application, the exact same application, but resubmitting it and then requesting withdrawal at the same meeting for August 12th. The town Council said that that's allowed. So tomorrow is the deadline. He hasn't submitted it, but we're still today. So hopefully he'll get us something tomorrow to get this in, in motion. Um, but 
it's more of an administrative type yeah. thing. Uh, so what he would have to do is request withdrawal, the submission would go in, and then instead of presenting everything again in excruciating detail, he could, this is what Muriel, I believe, talked about last meeting, or we talked about aside, um, could just give a quick recap for everybody so all the board members are on, on top of it and can then participate. Um, yes, but I think that he is looking to make minor changes to account for frontage depth issues. Yes, so he would be re he would be submitting the revised plan. Yes. But it would be a minor a minor amendment to what is not officially yeah. a minor amendment, but it would be a minor revision to what was submitted previously. Yeah. So he does have a, an approach to the to those to where that we got on as well. So that if that comes in tomorrow because that's the deadline that will happen. So they're all twenty foot driveways now? Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the, just, just a question for John. Yeah. Oh yes, and and then an issue with the solar farm. Um, they provided, and I, this may have been identified by the board. Um, the parcel that has the equipment that's in the Wood Street Historic District was not actually advertised as part of the project. They only gave us the butters for the larger piece. So they are going to give us in a butters list. We've requested butters. <coughs> We hope they give it to us tomorrow to then re-advertise and it'll essentially be a new hearing so it's as if the previous hearing didn't happen okay yeah. there is there is a house that is not on the plan that needs to get on the plan so there's submission to be corrected to have that on there for sure yeah, that, that may not be corrected by the submission but that's something that the board can <coughs> I don't know the timeline of when they're going to be able to revise the plans for the submission since. I don't either, but a missing house is a missing house. Right. Is it a missing house or a missing parcel? It's a house. house. So they can add that on and address okay. that. It's, it, well, I don't, I, I, I don't know if it's part. It, it's a house that parcel. didn't show up. I don't know the parcel status, to be honest. Yeah. But so just it's not a huge concern. And given that our August 12th agenda is really full, and given that the deadline to do that is tomorrow, are we under any obligation to keep him on the August 12th agenda if he does that? We are. It's, yeah. It's I was just looking for, I was looking for somebody to get a little bit of relief on that agenda because that's going to be a tough one for us to get through. We can do it. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, well, I will just add that I think the trails is very, they came to design review board and it seems pretty straightforward. So I think we can. Ideally, get through that quickly. Um, 97 South Street will be a little bit interesting too because they need to come to Design Review Board. I don't know if they have talked to anybody. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, so we did talk about that. And yeah. I think, I don't know if you had already left, um, but I had brought up to Jeff having each uh, Design Review Board individually submit, comp review the plans and submit comments um, to the Planning Board rather than have the board as a board itself submit comments just because there's no way for them to meet yeah. before then. Quick description, 97 South Street. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a minor site plan amendment, so it's um, like in biopharmaceuticals or biotechnology. Is where Lanza was. Where, where, yeah, exactly. Is uh, wanting to come into that building. They want to do facade changes and make two new entrances. And then there's also, so it's kind of two, almost two separate projects. <coughs> it's the building and then they want to um, redo the part resurface the parking lot redo some of the landscaping um and put new light poles in there so it's not a wholesale change of the parking lot it's just kind of making it nicer but did you say new entrances off the street or no two entrances to the building to the building okay so changing the facade of the building to allow for two entrances one of the entrances is going to take away three parking spots okay. but they have the three parking spots to spare right. and it doesn't right. take away from their, their new great um, thanks so I guess my first thoughts are um, uh, I'm not in a real hurry to hurry the process for anybody. It does really feel like it's pretty, um, pretty minor. I would, if we took that approach to let the design review board members each submit directly to us, I don't necessarily have an objection to that. Um, but that if there is anything that's complicating that, I think that they need to know that the planning board is going to want the design review board to <coughs> sort through their feedback um, before, I would think, before we made a final decision here. 
Um, so it, we can try that. It's, it really is a facade change. It really does feel like something that's minor. Um, it also feels to me like we're stepping outside of the process here. Um, and I just want to make sure we don't step so far outside the process we don't do justice to the design of new piece. I guess is really what I want to say. Yeah. I don't know how people feel about the approach. Any objections to that approach? Okay. I, just, I, I guess I just want to make sure it's limited that we wouldn't be doing this every month f um, f yeah, for every project. No. no. I, and I would never want to send the uh, message that we were in any way devaluing the design. I know from myself personally, I, um, I rely heavily on the design review board's um, input. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that we're careful as we... Um, so if we all say we love it on the design review board, then no problem. But if, if we have differing opinions when we email John our comments. That's, that's, that's what I'm okay. thinking, right? I just, looking ahead, I see that, that it could be problematic because you won't have had an opportunity to discuss it mm -hmm. amongst yourselves, and that really does shortchange your process. So if it's all good, it's all good. Um, if there are issues that need to be resolved, then they'll need to be resolved. And it also doesn't allow the design review board to back and forth with the actual applicant. No, that's right. That's exactly right, yeah. And to Gary's point, the uh, DPW Scenic Road, I've been assured by John Westling, will take all of two minutes. Oh, that's so good. that'll be mitigating to the time of the Because he's the tree warden, too. We're going to get a tree warden that's uh, objective and not and impartial for his... Um, <laughs> not just asking. It's <laughs> a good thought. Right? Um, go, uh, Joe Regan, he's right, we need a tree warden and we need one fast. All right, I will entertain a motion to open the public hearing for Maspinock Woods. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, here we go. Thank you for the tree department. Good evening. Uh, for the record, Peter Biper with uh, Commissioner Wheeler. Um, we were here last time and went through the changes to units 21 and 22, 23 and 24, as well as 31, which is the property in West Union, uh, West Elm, I'm sorry. Um, there were some issues, some, some questions from people in the, in the nature of overall site conditions, uh, and then the board just kind of wanted to get a sense of what was being done and where it was being done. So the meeting was continued for a site walk, which a couple of planning board members are out there with uh, out there. Uh, we have addressed a number of the landscaping issues and the nature of the erosion, even with the storms that we've had. Uh, the overall plan, and I don't know if you got a chance, I have more copies of this in print. If you didn't get those, this is what I didn't know today. Everybody got that black and white. Oh, yeah, give us the colored version. <laughs> Don't, don't hold back, yeah. Um, any reason this wasn't submitted before today? I'm sorry? Is there any reason this wasn't submitted before today? Um, I just got them the end of last week, so I had hoped to drop them off your office on Friday, but Friday's a tough day, so. Uh, Friday's also past the deadline, too, so. Okay. So, none of the landscaping, per se, from the viewpoint of the road, landscaping is in. Uh, that is all anticipated to start September and to hopefully be finished up. Um, what we had said last time we would present you with a landscaping plan uh, as you come down the road uh, to buffer the existing houses, the first couple of his existing houses on the right hand side uh, with units 21 through 24. So that's what you're seeing there. Uh, it's a use of, of tall. Uh, London plane trees, as well as large arborvitaes. Uh, in, in, in addition, that plan also depicts that the, the same London will be planted across the street, so you'll have double protection. So from the front door of the property is across the street. Of course, they're set back a minimum of 20 feet. Then you got the road. Then you got 20 feet before the decks on the, the buildings that we're talking about. So you got at least 60 feet uh, from structure to structure. Uh, so you'll have two series of landscapings, one on each side of the road, 
uh, to buffer those buffer the units of the backyards as, as well as the front. Quick question: The arbor vitaes are deer resistant. Yeah. They, they make a they make an arbor vitae now that's deer resistant that most of the developers are putting in. Just want to make sure you use that and not I'll, the. I'll take. I'll look into that. Yes. Thank you. I was saying to the chair, um, I think on the sidewalk I went individually, and uh, the original layout with the middle units when they were diagonal, um, I think fits better in what my view of this property could be. Um, looking at it now, I think that the sideways component on paper looks like it will fit, but I think I'm looking at it and imagining it. I think maybe it might be too crowded in the middle section. Um, and just kind of hoping that these trees <coughs> will add the full Mass Panag Woods ef effect that you're going for. Uh, I'm just a little bit concerned about too much the overcrowding. But um, I trust that uh, looking at this today at the beginning of the meeting, uh, it's a lot more trees than I thought would be there. So that to me, that means that there'll be more uh, breaking up the view from house, house, house to houses and trees, house and trees. So I'm hoping this is for the best. I'm wishing you luck. John, do you have anything that you want to say about it before we? Uh, just the, so the main comment I had was about the issue that the planning board um, heard from one of the own current owners. I don't know if that's something we want to discuss at the moment or if it's so I think that the, um, the issues that the current owners have um, are not necessarily the purview of this right. board. However, um, I do appreciate that um, some uh, interaction and, and effort has been made to, to uh, satisfy the needs of the current owners in there. But uh, yeah, I don't think that we need to. That's an issue with that. the director of municipal uh, inspections. And then after that, it's, it's a private issue between the developer um, <clears throat> all right so uh, I'm sorry I'm, I'm re reading actually what's in front of us so we have do we have two actions right it's the proposed amendments to the special permit um, are for the internal units it oh. is one the exception of the change to all the units and then for the property on, on West Elm, a waiver of the setback for you know this special district, which is supposed to be, uh, I believe it's 100, but you already granted a waiver for the existing, but now we're moving it a little bit. So we need a waiver for the location of, of the dwelling at West, West Elm. All right, those are two separate actions, or they're all in one? I think the board typically has treated the change in the footprints as one approval, and then the waiver would be the second. Phil, did you have any comments because you just saw the landscaping plan on the fly? Um, I don't have uh, very little information. All right, so shall we start around? I'll start to my left. How about that? Shall we start around? Do you, Patrick, do you have any questions in particular on these? No, I, I was on that site walk with you and, yeah, you know, just seeing this. Uh, this landscape layout, you know, I think that's going to address some of the concerns that the neighbor had across the way of looking into our windows. So I don't have any big concerns about it. Are we also discussing the the five West Elm? Yes. Okay. So, just to clarify for everyone, I did uh, drive there and walk around a little bit on my own because I wasn't able to make the site walk. Um, and. Um, and with the landscaping, you know, I, I do certainly think it's it's all pretty tight in there. But um, with the landscaping that's proposed, it does look like it would be adequate within the development itself for the new units 21 through 24. Um, for the um, Five West Elm, um, I'm concerned about the um, the location. And the fact that, that a previous waiver, I believe, waiver other than special permit, um, was granted for the preservation of the historic structure on site. Um, I don't 
you know, personally have any objection to the historic structure being changed out for a new structure um, based on what we've heard of the, um, of the level of maintenance of the old structure. But we do need to, I think, look at the setbacks. Um, uh, and, you know, because it's a new structure, it's a new situation. I agree. No comments. Um, I'm more leery of the West Elm, 5 West Elm Street uh, section, but uh, uh, like I said earlier, the main section, the middle section, the trees, uh, the bushes in between the trees uh, will help the neighbors, will help the abutters. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking this should be okay. Uh, but I think I'd like to hear more discussion about the 5 West Elm Street portion. I don't think I have anything to add. Or do we determine it's not an historic structure or is it Sorry, is it more than 75 years or it's no, less than 75? Less than 75. Can you just uh, refresh my memory and the units in the, currently in the development, it's going from what square footage currently in the plan to the new proposed square footage per unit? What's the increase in square footage? The, the existing square footage of the yep. existing house? No, not the house. The, the internal units. The internal units. Is any square footage changing? 21, 22, designed. 22. Yes. Um, what we're looking at. The biggest change is the unit um, 24, that's the one that pushes more towards West Elm, mm -hmm. towards that open space, and that's a total increase of 226 square feet. The other unit closest to everybody else is actually a reduction of 27 square feet. Okay. So the overall, the average of the units as now approved is, is rough, roughly 2,100 square feet. In, in the unit 23 is, is 20,080. Uh, in unit 24 is 23. 33. Okay, so, so they're within the average of what's taking place out there. It's, it's not like one is jumping up 50% bigger. Um, and on 5 West Elm, what is, is there any new information besides uh, from the Board of Health or the Conservation Commission related to 5 West Elm? The, we got, the only comments we received in the nature of the Board of Health or the Conservation Commission deals with 30, 31, which is the one on uh, West Elm. Okay. We're actually meeting with the Conservation Commission tomorrow night on that. Uh, we did get comment from the Board of Health just from the viewpoint of the septic system and making sure that the existing septic system, which we plan to use, is still capable of supporting the number of bedrooms in the house we've got. But beyond that, there's been nothing. The, <coughs> so the, the concern with 5 West Elm is that originally was going to be the driveway entrance to that neighborhood. The driveway entrance got moved. Um, I wasn't on the planning board at that time, but I'm leery of changing, like that was originally said to not increase the, the footprint of that home, mm -hmm. but that current home is in disrepair. It's totally not, you know, re, not salvaging that home. It's, I, I, I get that. Um, what is the impact, uh, <coughs> if it was just rebuilding the current home and the current footprint, is it is it just basically leveling it, destroying the foundation, and starting over, or is it? Um, well, I mean, theoretically, you could do that. I mean, the amount of money to do that wouldn't make any sense, and then it wouldn't have the appearance of this. What we're looking to do in, in talk to the conservation commissions, if you've been either on the site or by the site now, the whole front of it, all the way up to the house, is basically cleared out. So the intent is to, to have a, a, only a driveway and a little bit of lawn next to the driveway, but to kind of restore everything on the right-hand side and some on the left, so that when you are done, you'll see more vegetated, natural look than what's out there now. So we're trying to work with the Conservation Commission to provide more environmental uh, conservation measures because when you look at the lot now to the right hand side there's a vernal pool off to the right yep. so we're kind of restoring that all in a natural condition uh, which doesn't exist today and the square footage of 5 West Elm Street that's proposed 
I'm sorry? The square footage of the 5 West Elm Street, the, the proposed square footage? It, it would be one of the Emily plans. So it would put be another 30, 20, 20, 20, yep. 20, yeah. 20, yeah. 20 yeah. Uh, So it will look like one of the It would be inside. approximately 2452. <laughs> a little, little yeah. over 2400. Yeah. Approximately 2400 square feet. Okay, so it's going to appear as a single family home, but it'll be slightly larger than any of the. It's it's the same as it's the same size as one of our units. We okay. one of the other MLAs that the board had previously approved. Yeah. Okay. We converted uh, one of the units to a detached uh, right. unit. So we made some architectural changes since it's not connected to a unit, but it's essentially the same size and um, uh, space. Okay. What we had to do was take that blank wall and create architectural features for it, working through the design reward committee. That's what we ended up doing and shifted the entry to the other side to break up that what used to be as part of a duplex unit or blank wall. Okay. All right, thank you. Just through the chair going back to that, can you, um, so is that, can you remind me, is that going to have any connectivity to the rest of the development or is it only going to be it's off a, of It's a unit in and of itself. It's still, again, as we went through, for some reason it was part of the condominium, but it doesn't share any of the roadway. Behind the house is the existing septic system, which will remain, and then there's wetlands and woods that will remain. So there'll be no connection between the main development so, so, and this lot. So, so will they be part of the condo association, and will they be? It, it's required to be as it stands right now, and that's one of our issues we have to deal with with the condo. Because technically, and, and back to answer one of the other questions, the setback of the proposed structure meets all the requirements if it wasn't for this development. So it meets all the setback requirements applicable to the district that it's in, so it can stand on its own as a single family house law. But again, technically, it was created as part of the condominium back when the thing was approved in 2005 2006. So, so I understand that, but, but then, then why not just split out that parcel and develop it as a single family home? Well, we have to, we have to deal with all, all the condominiums and everything. So you're telling me it's not a condo? I'm sorry? It's a, it's a single family, it's an it's a individual structure. Yeah, I don't. So if I may Sorry, try there. and clarify, the parcel itself was included in the special permit that granted the approval for the condo uh, development. Right. So it, it's tied into that. So they're developing it as if it was a single family lot, but it's it the, is technically part of that special permit. Okay, so they can't split it out. They can't. We have it, to, it would take legal. We have to come back and ask board for an amendment to pull it out. At this time, we're not doing that because, again, we've got to get approval from the condominium folks before we can pull it out. So we'd have a couple more steps before we could accomplish that. Thank you. Frank. Technically, there is a walking path from that property through to the back of the property. Uh, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Technically, there is a walking path behind 5 West Elm Street to the back of the property to the... Yeah, none of the, none of the nature of the walking path or anything else is being impacted by any of this. Right. So it is part of the same system. They would have the benefit of using that path, yes, but... I mean, to ask them to pay full condo fees just for the benefit that's of service. Yeah, right. that service. Yeah, that's our issue. So I'm, uh, I'm going to be candid. I'm struggling a little bit uh, on, on two fronts. First, um, the original decision uh, mandated, you know, allowed for the waivers so that that house would stay a house. Um, and I am a little bit um, uh, reluctant to rethink a previous planning board decision understanding now that the road doesn't go through there and things have changed. Um, I'm especially personally reluctant to, um, to add to the waivers to make the setbacks even less compliant. Um, and I'll tell you from an aesthetic perspective, I'm not sure I love one of the condo units out there. I think that that's probably why the previous planning board wanted it to preserve the house. Um, I don't know. We can't go back and rethink and, and re-know what, what they want. Um, and um, I don't think we can act on the landscape plan that we saw for the first time 
um, at, being passed out at the meeting. So um, we're going to ha have to have you back. But shall we talk about the waiver and at least take a vote on the waiver so that you have that piece? So I, I'm I am at the outset not in favor of increasing the um, the the setback uh, waiver amount. At least I don't think it's in keeping with the decision. I think it's rethinking a previous decision, and it doesn't preserve the house. From the viewpoint of the impact, I think the existing building is like 40 feet, and we're asking it to be 25. And that again, that whole side will maintain vegetation. The next house is a series of of wood and everything else. So there's no impact to the abutter next door, at least in our opinion, from the viewpoint of the granting of that way. Yeah, I get your. I understand your your position. So we're going to move forward with, uh, is the question to move forward with just voting on the internal changes? On the waiver, on the waivers that they need. Is that, from a process perspective, is that helpful? We found it helpful before. Yeah. So the, the internal changes to 21, 23? No, that comes, that includes this okay. that just came. Yeah, so, so we'll have to, we'll have so to So we're, we're basically saying we're waiting on everything. But we're yeah. discussing the setback waiver. But the setback waivers okay. we could talk about and decide on. So I'm inclined to grant the setback waiver. It meets the setback criteria for the district it's in, the West Elm Street, correct? It just doesn't meet the setback criteria for the development. All right. Like I think right now the house there is an eyesore. It's falling apart. It's not particularly. It's not historically significant. I mean, I think it would be an improvement to build. The, the condo, the condo, you know, it's, I know it's the condo style, but I think it would still be an improvement to the street. So I'm inclined to grant the setback waiver. Um, uh, it's a very, I just like, I know it's not our purview for conservation or Board of Health, but like to decrease any type of setback in that so close to the backside of Lake Maspinock, I, I don't, I'm not a fan, I'm not in favor. I mean, if it would make any sense, we could certainly come up with a landscaping plan for that side to show you that the setback of the house with the landscaping won't impact anything on that other side. If, if the concern with the setback waiver is impact to the abutting property. So, so I think what I'm struggling with is, is why do we need to decrease the setback? Just from the viewpoint of the, the wetlands on both sides of the lot impact where you can, where you can put it. So there's a series of wetlands on the right-hand side, so we're trying to keep out of those buffer for purposes of the Conservation Commission, which forces the house farther that way. And again, what we used as a design standard was the setbacks for that lot within that district, which we meet. Do we even have a lot plan that we can look at for this discussion? Do we have a what? We're like a lot plan of the layouts of the building or anything. I don't know if it's back. I, I, I don't think it's in this packet. It was in the last one. It was in. Yeah. Yeah. It I had was to look it up. It was way the back. June, the June 10th? We had a conceptual meeting with the right. Conservation Commission, and we, we got feedback that uh, they, would prefer, they would prefer to see a, a home further away from. If you're going to tear down the ho house anyway, they would prefer that you moved it out. Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to meet with that <laughs> tomorrow. It, 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 we're gonna, we're, we followed up with the conceptual discussion by filing a notice of intent with the plan that we've shared with, with you and the hearing uh, with the Conservation Commission is, um, is tomorrow. But the setback was uh, the location of the home with uh, requiring the setback um, uh, uh, waiver was based on feedback that we got from the Conservation Commission in a conceptual discussion. So again, this is the, the 50 foot buffer there that we have to stay out of. So you can see we're about as close to that as we can get with the house, which again forces everything that way. The property line here, big standard trees there, vernal pool up, up in this area. So this will always remain vegetated and right now, the tree line is somewhere in there. So this whole area, again, if you've been out by the site, is basically open and brown. So the ultimate plan is to, you know, 
more, make that return to some extent in its natural a small land area, uh, lawn area, and a small lawn area here, let this return to its but, hold on one second. wetland vegetation. But I'm, I'm going to ask Phil for his input. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my thought was is that if, if there's any benefit relative to wetlands, maybe, you know, keep increasing the distance to wetlands and, and being able to restore some of the areas. It looks, is this, is this a lot? Yeah. It's all open up in front, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so and you can you can see the existing home in the back that's further that's further into the buffer zone. Yeah. On the plan, this is the existing home, and we're pulling it uh, further out of the buffer zones by moving it forward. Okay. And it would also reduce the amount of pavement for driveway. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know. So to the chair, could you summarize yeah. your concerns again with the picture there, just so we understand? With the picture there. So, uh, so my concerns were increasing the uh, setback relief from previous decisions, um, just from the perspective of just sort of um, really uh, rethinking a previous planning board's decision. Right. So as it's stated in the decision, it was they were the setbacks were waived to enable pre preservation of the house right. um, I don't know if at the time they thought that was the most environmentally friendly proposal I don't know but through you do we have it in our jurisdiction to control whether the house is demolished or not I mean that's kind of up to them with their property right well it's in the decision that it's going to be preserved the original one yes yeah I, yeah I mean, we required that they preserve it. No, or I we think we're saying no. the option to preserve no, it. No, but it was so it could be preserved. Right. Why? Why was that? Right. I don't know. So they got relief so that the house could be preserved. Um, I don't know. So are we still rotating? Yeah, sure. Time. Um, I'm leaning towards a no. Um, the same reasons you were outlining. Uh, I was here some of those votes on the Conservation Commission and then later on the Planning Board. Uh, one aspect that we're not really looking at is that you knew what you were buying, the previous developer knew what he was doing, that property was there, we knew about the property, we knew about the wetlands, and these are things that we were working with together over the years. Um, I just would like more information uh, to come from the Conservation Commission uh, because I know one of the major responsibilities of the Conservation Commission is to look at does this improve the property, improve <coughs> the wetlands, improve the neighborhood and maybe it does. Um, I would just like to have a little bit more information and have them make their decision to help us make a more informed decision. On the issue with this, would it make more sense until we figure out exactly what the CONCOM is doing and then we come up <coughs> with a full landscaping, buffering, and restoration plan that you can look at? Yeah. Yes. Um, I am... Uh, yeah. Do I the am, other units tonight, yeah. presumably. Uh, I, I am also, um, you know, I, it, it's, a, it's good information to know that it's environmentally better from the engineer's perspective. Um, I don't know what anybody was thinking about wanting to preserve that house. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I would not argue for preserving that house myself personally. Um, I do think that it's a little that having a standalone condo unit out there is a little awkward. You know, it doesn't doesn't fit in. It doesn't for whatever reason. It with the way it ended up being built and designed, yeah, it doesn't I, fit in. I looked at the set of minutes from way back. It's really nondescript. Neither of us were around at the time they granted We're all new to this. So That's awesome. I can't comment. All right. Well, so it's, it, yeah, it's an open question. So yes, it makes more sense, I think, to have it fully landscaped and the, and the CONCOM um, weighing in on it from my perspective. Um, uh, are people um, comfortable voting on the changes to the internal units? Just a quick question. I, I do have a comment about trees. I don't know if it really exists. Does that relate to that, or uh, you can make your comment on trees? Okay. I think we have to look at this. Yeah, this will be quick because I know it's more important yeah. thing than trees to talk about. But mm -hmm. I did, I did confirm that the green giant is deer resistant. Just online, oh, I okay, great. However, I had a question about London plane tree because I'd never heard of that before. 
and I don't know if we have any in town. And it says that it's a, a huge tree that can have a 10 foot wide trunk. So I would suggest that maybe just regular maples or something like that. Just, you might want to look at, at the size of that tree. Okay. London plane, it's, it's like a sycamore, it gets really big. Nice. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. You take over the houses in the street too. Three hundred years. Could yeah. be really nice. <laughs> just a comment. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would tend to trust their knowledge about looking at this plan. If there's a ten foot wide tree trunk, it's not going to be ten feet wide for like you said, three hundred years. So. Yeah. Wikipedia is always correct. So. <laughs> is that where you were looking? Of course. All right, so John, um, go ahead, Gary. No, it's just going back to your question, Mira, about whether or not we're comfortable on the um, proposed site plan changes. I, I tend to agree with you. I, for me, it's, it's a pet peeve of mine when stuff comes in last minute um, because, you know, case in point, Dave, Dave's doing you know, research on his iPad or on his phone to try and do this real time, and, and I, I, I don't like that. I'll, although what I'm torn about is that also having just driven out to the site today, um, that middle section is a big eyesore, and at least for the residents, I, I like the idea of trying to get this moving forward so they can yep. finish the neighborhood. I've lived in a neighborhood under construction, and um, you know, to me there's some benefit there. So I, I, I don't know, I, I, I think I'm okay moving forward with voting on it, but I just want to continue to emphasize to any applicants that, that well, this stuff needs to be we'll submitted sure for the well on timelines. What's that? We'll make sure you get things well in advance. Then. Thank you. So, and I'll just make the point, until we draw the line. I know. It'll never be there. <laughs> I know. Okay. So, um, what's the board's, um, we, uh, let me entertain a motion to open the public hearing and continue it for the LNG line replacement until the conclusion of this particular hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So, how do we feel? I think the interior. We could vote on. I do too. Despite the, <laughs> despite the landscape. Despite the in. last <laughs> night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I will have a tantrum if it happens again. <laughs> All right, so uh, John, help me out. Where are we for the in, for the decision criteria for the internal units? So that's a site plan. Is that page? Oh, uh, on the memo. Page five. Page five, correct. Okay, so um, bottom of the page. Yep, um, for the site plan approval criteria. Before the planning board may approve the site plan, it shall determine each of the following, that the plans provide adequately for convenience and safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site and in relation to adjacent streets, property, or, or improvements. I think we can agree that that, is, that condition is met. Uh, our criteria is satisfied. That the plans assure the adequacy of the methods of disposal of sewerage, refuge, and other wastes, and the methods of drainage for surface water and seasonal flooding, if any. That was the Board of Health's um, approval, they're comfortable with it, right? They had no issues with it. Um, all of the provisions of this chapter, including 210, 72 A and B, have been complied with, and all necessary special permits and variances have been granted from the Board of Appeals. That doesn't apply, I don't think, or has it, it's happened that there's nothing new about that. Um, if the planning board does not make all of the above determinations, it shall deny the application stating its reasons for such denial. Okay. Pursuant to 21075B, the approved garden apartment site plan may be modified or amended by the planning board on its motion or as with the, this case upon application by the developer. If the board determines that such modifications are significant, it shall hold a public hearing, blah, 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 blah. All right, so I will entertain a motion to approve um, the site plan uh, changes for units number, help me, 21, 22, 23 and 24. And just one process question. Do we need to acknowledge that we do not deem these changes significant? Uh, no, it's been advertised okay. just in case. So uh, it's, it's really more of a notification issue. So move for those four units. I'll second that. Um, 
Uh, a hold on, uh, any further discussion? The only thing I didn't do was ask if there was any members of the public here that wanted to speak to this. All right, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? All right. <clears throat> um, how about for the special permit for uh, the standalone unit? My, my preference is to wait until after uh, CONCOM. I'd like, I'd like to see more details and I'm, I'm just inherently, I, I understand your point, but I'm just, I don't like the idea of a, effectively a single standalone condo that's on its own and okay, we when, we're, when, we're, when we're making additional waivers, I just, makes me nervous when we start granting additional waivers, so. Yeah, the waivers deal with this unit 31, so. You know, we're asking right. you to put all that right. off till we. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yep. That's Sounds 31 good. is uh, five West Elm. Okay. So they're receptive to it, so sounds fine. Okay. Do we need to? We don't need to extend a decision. We just need to continue the hearing. For the special permit, we didn't really. The special permit site plan that wasn't really advertised correctly. It did. Yeah. Because you came, you submitted that later. We didn't really apply for it because we didn't get all the. I think it said if you need time, we'll give you an extension on it. Oh, an, extension it uh, an extension on what? Help me out. A decision for, for the site plan? For, the, for, uh, for five yes. west down. Oh, for five west down. There was a change to the site plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then a special permit came into play. Okay, so we'll extend it at the same time. When yeah. will we move uh, the hearing? Uh, it looks like September 9th. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to um, continue the special permit. Um, application to September 9th and the decision for this for are you saying there's a site plan piece yeah, to it as well? Change the site plan but it's also a special permit because of the waiver in this well, you unit 31 but we can do the decision on the other changes right? Yes yeah. so and the decision to September 15th is that we right? usually do it a week after, right? It would be, so the it would be 16. 16. 16. Thank you. My math was bad. Um, I only got a math degree back in the day. No, no worries. Um, all right. Is, can I have a motion for that? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. September 9th it is. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your time. All right, we are now <coughs> we are on the LNG line replacement. <coughs> John, do we have <coughs> folks from the? Just going to run to the bathroom. Twelve acres. Yeah. Yeah, we okay. can. The zoning on the mass permit which was garden permit. Yeah. Yeah. Previous to the to the moratorium. Yeah. 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 All right, while you guys get set up from the LNG, we're going to take a five minute break. Sounds good. You might? Yep. I have to give it back. <laughs> I'll sit on the table. Probably not. He's going on this one. He's going on this computer. Do you have a flash drive? Yeah. information. That's fine. Yeah. Questions in between PowerPoint on this computer. He's a comedian and they ask questions in between. Oh, we do. How do you hear them though? <laughs> We're this, moving right now. Microsoft. Oh, they are. So some computers. If they're not, I just guess.
Andrew Sundoon in Scotland. Oh, yeah, Wales, but... Yeah. Wales? Yeah. No, he really liked it. He's home for the summer, but uh, going back to the fall. <laughs> when does he leave for school again? Uh, September 15th, I think we've got the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a different schedule. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. I'm going to just recommend we wait for Kobe and, uh, I, oh, Kobe's back. John? Oh, you turned him down. Does it make a noise? Sounds like a helicopter. Bummer. Kobe, do you know if we're going to need to move? From there was some discussion that yeah. that uh, Nor Norman was going to need us to move our meetings because we were part people were parking in the. I haven't heard any more. So, uh, let me ask John. Maybe we can call in a complain to, to Norman anonymously. <laughs> and then have to <laughs> right. So John, are we still scheduling our meetings for this meeting? Or? Where there was I some kind of okay. I haven't heard anything from Norman about moving to the library other than that one comment. One time, uh, okay. But uh, actually, that brings up a good point. Elaine had said that there is an issue with the elevator, and there is some plans to fix it. Uh, there's no timetable as to when that's going to happen, but when that does happen, all the meetings in this building are going to have to take place on the ground floor or in a different building. But that's, okay. all, that's all we know about that right now. For accessibility issues. Yeah. Accessibility issues, yeah. Sure. Did you say library was an option? The, the library is an option. Oh, that would be wonderful. Um, and that's where we've been told we may have to start meeting. But I haven't gotten any actual. Let me ask this: Is it e is it as easy or not for HCAM to cover us at the library? It's easier to cover you from HCAM. <laughs> 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 All right, that wasn't the question. Just so you know. <laughs> the library is fine. The downstairs basement is fine. Okay. Okay. Do you want to just contemplate moving to the library? Sure. Which, which room would we be in the library? Oh, I was thinking it would be the big I hall. But would it be the big hall, the old church? Or we, we don't know. Conference room. Oh, that's, really well, that's small. Okay. Ooh, that's tiny. That would be cool. I'm not. I'm not sure that works. For us. No, that would be too small. I can I talk to Norman. All right. The just find out. I, I guess we would be amenable to moving oh, if, it was, uh, if it was. If it's a space that Yeah, worked. that's about it. It is. Yeah. I think HK might be the most. Mm. Yeah, <coughs> it makes me sick. The lights? <laughs> no, it's the cleaning products. Is there any possibility of changing that, I wonder? Or is it the oh, cleaning H products. Oh. It made me cough, cough, cough. For a year and a half, I oh, coughed on this board. Done. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So the senior center is an option, I guess. Yeah, too. senior center. I just think it's the time of day, too. I think they go through and clean, and it just, it just triggers me. I don't know. Uh, that's my guess, anyway. I also, I, I, I work during the day in shelters, too, so I'm constantly exposed, and that just put me over the top. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, all right, I'm, I lost my page here. So to the applicant, go ahead, please, and introduce yourselves and your application. My name is Richard Paquette. I'm with TRC and I'm here tonight on behalf of Eversource uh, Energy for the transfer line replacement project. And we have submitted a application for stormwater management permit and earth removal permit. Sean Berthium, Eversource Energy, uh, project engineer. I'm Matt Waldrop with Eversource Energy. I'm a senior environmental specialist. Okay. Go ahead and introduce your project in general. Oh, thank you. Um, members of the board, we have a, a short PowerPoint presentation that we could throw up on the screen All if right, that's just okay. Just so you know, we see it behind you too at the same oh. time. So, okay. so we're not ignoring your presentation. <laughs> All right. You, you got a bigger screen too. So, so the, um, I'll start off by giving you an overview of the project um, in its entirety and then we'll, we'll, we'll um, kind of focus down on, on what we have before you tonight. Um, so it's the Hopkinton Ashland transfer line replacement project. Um, the project is a um, pipeline replacement and the um, existing transfer line is located in um, Hopkinton and Ashland. And the um, 
transfer line has been in place since the late 1950s. It's a six inch, early 1950s, thank you, Sean. Um, it's been in place uh, uh, since that time within an existing easement. Um, the purpose of the project is to replace or basically increase the diameter of the existing line. It's a six inch <laughs> diameter line. Um, and the uh, proposal is to replace that with a 12 inch diameter line. The, the actual transfer line starts at the Wilson Street Gate Station in Hopkinton and ends at the Pond Street Gate, Gate Station in Ashland. Um, there are two segments of 12 inch pipe on either end of the transfer line. Um, and the center piece, if, if you will, and the majority of the transfer line is six inch diameter. So there's an existing pressure drop that um, is in the system right now. So the, the purpose of the project is to alleviate that pressure drop, thereby increasing, uh, improving reliability, and, uh, and which basically will serve the, the greater uh, Framingham area for, for gas uh, distribution. So um, the, the entire project length is 3.7 miles. That includes the portion in Hopkinton and Ashland. The actual length in Hawkington is about 1.1 miles from um, start um, to finish. Um, just a few other little uh, facts. Can you go to the next slide, John? Actually, one more. Yeah. One more? Yeah. Sorry about that. So the, um, the slide that you're looking at now provides you with some of the um, uh, specifications of the line as you can see its uh, maximum operating pressure is 450 pounds per square inch um, and its maximum allowable pressure is 800 thanks um, <clears throat> the construction for the project and I'll get into a little bit more of that um, in a few other slides is phased out over the course of five years with with the um, proposal to construct about 4,000 feet of the um, uh, segment each year during the summer season, summer construction season. So um, basically starting in, in 2020 and being fully in service by 2024 in Ashland. And the proposal is to construct from west uh, to east, so starting in Hawkington and ending um, in Ashland. So as I mentioned to you before, uh, there's about 1.2 miles in Hopkinton. Uh, it's an existing pipe that's there now. Um, the, <coughs> the easement itself is, uh, varies. It's, there's two widths depending on where you are. There's a 20-foot wide width and a 30-foot wide width. And I can, I'll show you in, from some additional slides on where that is. So this is, is strictly a pipe replacement, so there's no above ground facilities proposed, um, like a, a metering stations, uh, things like that. Um, there are two roads crossed in Hopkinton. One is the Legacy Farms Road North, and the other is Cross Street. And there's approximately 10 landowners crossed by the existing easement in Hopkinton. So this project is subject to review um, by multiple uh, state agencies and federal agencies as well. Um, it's being reviewed by the Energy Facilities Siting Board, and um, that that whole, if you're familiar with that process is a, a whole uh, siting board review that occurs um, with the filing of a petition. That project that that process has been underway now for over um, almost a year, about. Um, there are also um, other permits that we we're seeking as well, both at the state level and at the local level. Um, as part of the outreach for the project, there's been um, a number of open house community meetings as well as meetings with, with town officials when the, when the project was kicked off back in 2017 and then in, even into 2018, where um, the open houses, we um, basically had, had open houses in, in both Hopkinton and Ashland and, and notified abutters and, and landowners to, to basically educate them and, and inform them and answer any questions about the project as well. And then as well, we've had a number of meetings with uh, state agencies such as the DEP, Department of Conservation and Recreation, the, the standard permitting agencies for the project. 
this slide just shows you some of the permits and approvals that we're, we're seeking um, it, 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 as far as the uh, environmental review of the project goes um, from the Army Corps of Engineers down to the Hopkinton Conservation Commission. We've actually been in front of them already and had uh, received an order of conditions for the project. And we're here tonight for the stormwater management and the earth removal permits. We don't have the scenic road in front of us yet. No, we don't. I, I did file that, but our butters list expired. Um, so we needed, we're going to be bumped to the next meeting, uh, I believe. Is I still haven't gotten that yet. I didn't, don't even have an application. I hmm. spoke to Kate and pointed it out, sent her a blank. But I didn't okay, that. so we'll follow up then. Okay. But in back to your question, there's one scenic road cross street that the existing easement crosses um, just north of Franklin Road. This slide just gives you a, a sense of the schedule, like I mentioned to you before. Construction segments one and two, um, which are the first two years of the project, are, are in Hopkinton. This slide gives you a sense of, of where it occurs. So we're on the eastern um, side, cent east central side of Hopkinton. Um, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see the 2020 construction area. That's that beginning of that orange line is where the project begins to the west of Legacy Farms Road North, um, and it'll extend to the east across that road um, through properties owned by Liberty Mutual Insurance across Cross Street, and then across um, property um, now owned by Hopkinton Area Land Trust um, and then some other residential properties before it enters the town of Ashland, north of Franklin Road. On this, uh, on this slide, where, where are your 6-inch pipes and where are your 12-inch pipes? So on this slide, let's see if you can, they can't see them. They can't see them. You can't see, you can't see it there? Oops. The, they will both be located within the same existing easement uh, bounds. Yeah, I know. I, I'm just starting from where where does the 12 inches end? Oh, and I'm the six sorry. Start? So, Sean, it'd be right <clears throat> at the, I guess they would see it on the left hand side. Is it That's correct. where that dotted white line is at the. Is that what it is? That's correct. That would be at. Is that the, what it is? That's okay. the, That's yes. where the 12 inch section ends, okay. and then it goes to the continues to the uh, to the west to uh, Wil our Wilson Street gate station. So that, okay. Yeah, that's the eastern end, and the, the western end you can't see. That's all the way at the other end of the project. Okay. Right. And under Legacy Farms North Road, the gray is already 12. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That's correct. Okay. We had uh, had conversations with the developer that this project was forthcoming, um, but the act of construction wouldn't be done in time for some final landscaping and, and paving operations. So uh, we, we put a, a piece there to not have to go back and rip that up. We did we did check those areas significantly for any wetland resource areas or buffers and found that there was no common jurisdiction for that one piece. That was kind of important with the town. Through the chair, how many wetlands does the easement cross? Enough to, enough to I there. believe the total count is about five wetlands. The um, and I have some some slides showing the plan, so I can give you some more detail. But there's um, a wetland system that's associated primarily with the pond that's on um, the Liberty Mutual property to the west of, of Cross Street and north of that facility. Um, and there's, so there's a wetland system associated with the drainage of that pond. And then on the east side of Cross Street, there's additional wetlands um, you know, located between Cross Street and, and the end of the line in Ashland. But, but you said, I think you mentioned that Concon's already reviewed? Yes. We have yeah. conditions. Yeah, that's correct. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Nope. Just, no problem. If I could add one thing, you probably, the reason it's taken so long to come before the board is we actually didn't think we were going to be tripping the thresholds for soil disposal. And uh, what was the trigger for the storm water permit? Is that the, it's uh, the acre? The acre. We were kind of right on the fence. And we were trying to think, should we 
go ahead and think that we're going to be under the threshold, or should we go ahead and file and make sure that if we did pass them later, that we would have approval. So we made the decision to ultimately come in before the board and get that authorization. Better safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. So I just, just to give you a sense of, of what the um, construction would look like, I put this slide in here just to give you a, a cross-sectional view of the easement. Um, this, is, this particular example is a 30-foot wide easement where um, we would be digging a trench it's about two and a half feet wide, um, about five feet deep, because when it's backfilled, the pipe um, will have three feet of cover over the top of it as backfill material once it's placed in the trench. And then the spoiled material from the trench would be temporarily sidecast along the edge of the, the trench within the easement itself. So um, Eversource is not, look, not looking to um, get any temporary construction workspace or easements outside of the existing easement. The, the plan is to do everything within the existing easement from a construction standpoint. And this is just a, an additional zoomed in view, which is showing the trench and the pipe, the green circle in the middle would be where the pipe sits, um, related to the other, um, the, the trench width and depth. Sorry if I made a question on this. The existing six inch pipe is staying in place, correct? Correct. correct. So where is that in this drawing? It's not shown in this particular cross section, but Sean can. Yeah, this, this detail is just to uh, depict the excavation for the, uh, the new pipeline. The existing portion would be to either side of this trench. I, we, we may have a detail coming up further in the presentation that de might depict that better. If not, that is something we can provide to show you where that would be in conjunction with our construction. What is the material of the pipe that's being left, the six inch pipe? Steel. Steel. Sorry. Nope. So the six inch Actually, pipe is. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you finish your presentation? No, there's. Okay. A this why, don't, why don't we just do it as a process? That's okay. That's okay. Um, why don't just, yeah, finish the process and then we'll. I've, I've done the same thing. I've interjected questions. <laughs> no questions are fine. Yeah, so the next few slides, I just w was going to just take you down the easement, but it, I mean, it's kind of tough to, to really appreciate it from looking at the, at the screen right here. But these are the drawings that were submitted with the application. I highlighted in yellow on the, um, on the uh, slide the, the actual existing easement, which again, it's the construction workspace. So the, the top band, that's where it starts on the left-hand side. Um, and, and runs um, across a cart road towards Legacy Farms Road um, north. And that actually, the second band shows the, uh, the existing crossing that's there now. So this photo here just shows you, this is where the easement begins, uh, where, the, where, where those stakes are, is where the project's generally gonna start and head to the east, just so you can kind of see what it's looking like out there. This would be looking towards right. Legacy Farms Road. Exactly, so this is east, uh, looking towards the east. This is actually the uh, uh, existing crossing of Legacy Farms Road North, um, that where the where the pipe runs across, right towards the uh, tree line. So once it makes across that road, um, it heads down a slope and it, and it follows the existing easement into the woods. Um, and this shows, um, you can see on that second band where the easement juts out, a, it turn, transitions to a 30-foot wide easement from a 20-foot wide easement as they make, it makes its way onto the Liberty Mutual property. And this photo just shows you the condition of the, of the easement. Um, you can kind of see the clear open area through the woods where the stakes are. That's the center line. Again, just, just more of that as it's moving through, through the woods within the easement. As we start to head across the Liberty Mutual property, you start to make a general transition downhill, and that's where you would be start to pick up some drainage within the easement and some uh, wetland areas, intermittent streams, and basically all this, the water is moving down towards the pond that, uh, that lies kind of at the, the bottom of that basin there. This is just another 
another photo in that area. At this point, we get down to the pond, um, and, and we, noted, we noted in our, our uh, discussions with the Conservation Commission that the water level here does fluctuate. We've been out there um, in 2017. It was, it was totally dry in that area. And then subsequent to that, we were out last year, and it was, it was flooded, flooded back uh, up again. I believe the pond was, was used as a, for a test track that was over there. I apologize. Um, I have to interrupt you. Um, uh, but we're going to continue in two minutes. Um, I need to open the public hearing for 9 B Street and address the withdrawal that was requested by the applicant for 9.30. So I'm making a motion to open the 9 B Street special permit hearing. Is it a combination motion where it's opened and accepted? Can we do it all at the same time and accept the withdrawal without prejudice? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Just a brief discussion. Um, yeah, um, I had heard from someone on the Historical Commission that they had felt that we were not very receptive to their plan, and that's why they were going to go another route. And I didn't remember that that was the case. But so I, anyway, I'm disappointed to hear that they're withdrawing. I was really hoping they'd preserve the historic structure. They intend to. Um, I, I've been told, John, that they intend to preserve the structure. The historical face? Or? I don't believe they're in terms of preserve the structure, but to reconstruct in a similar fashion. Ah. Yes, so that it's not having this historical look. And that's <clears throat> third we're just getting level away from. That, that's what I heard too, that they were going to build a replica or something, but I yeah. think it's prefer preferable to preserve when possible. So I'm disappointed by <laughs> <in> withdrawing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't disagree. And I don't know that we were. Um, I, I, th I think the complicating factor was the, the, the legal factor of splitting the, the law. Maybe. I'm merging the merge. I think that they saw that that was going to be difficult. I don't. I don't know. I didn't. There were conversations outside of this meeting. So they'll be back with something new, I guess. Okay. Sorry. They'll be back with something new in the future, I guess. I believe they're just building one house, which they're allowed to do by right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you for your patience. Oh. Oh. <coughs> audience. Uh, excuse oh. me, is this a public hearing? Yes. Will you take uh, questions from the public? For 9B? For Street? this hearing? For this, for this. Yes, indeed we will. So we just had a, 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 a continued public hearing for 9B Street. And the applicant had asked to withdraw. It was published for 9:30, so we just addressed that quickly, and we're coming right back to this one. Oh, okay. And we will certainly take public comment. Okay. Sorry about that. Apologize for the confusion. So I'll just jump to the next slide. So this photo actually just shows the very southern extent of the uh, Liberty Mutual Pond, which is what we refer to in the easement. Um, you can see it through, uh, runs through, this is actually looking back towards the west. This photo just shows the easement going across cross street. There's a pipe marker right on the, uh, the road there, right on the shoulder, looking east. Again, this passes through the uh, area, Hopkinton Area Land Trust property. Another photo showing what it looks like through that property. And then this is basically the end, end of the line um, on the bottom panel where it, where it enters Ashland <clears throat> just to the north of Franklin Road and to the, east, uh, to the west of Hardwick Road in Ashland. And there is a residential uh, property that's right near the end. This is just shows you the easement going across the lawn near Franklin Road. <clears throat> so the... Um, the application, obviously, for this from a stormwater management standpoint, we've provided information um, from an erosion sediment control um, uh, plan and process. The project is, um, we're not building any impervious surfaces out there. We're not paving or, or doing anything like that. The project involves the um, just trenching of the existing um, uh, easement, putting in the new pipe, backfilling. Uh, so it's, it's really an erosion sediment control type of project. 
um, not necessarily something where there's a, a post-construction stormwater um, design or building um, detention basins or things like that because the contractor, the whole goal of it is to return the grade on the easement to pre-construction condition and not alter the drainage patterns on the easement or anything like that. Um, and that'll be done through the use of BMPs, uh, setting up erosion controls on either side to keep any soils from moving back and forth off the right of way into the wetlands and streams. Um, when we're done with construction, making sure that we're seeding, mulching um, to stabilize soils. Um, so there's a number of um, uh, measures that will be in play through all these other permits that we've got right now. We need to comply with a SWIP and develop that for the project. Um, we've got DEP conditions, Conservation Commission uh, conditions related to um, these types of things as well. Yeah, I'll just end with the, um, we are in receipt of the review comments um, that we uh, got from the peer review engineer as well as Board of Health and the um, um, Town Council. Town Council, thank you. Um, we're currently working on all those to provide written responses back to the, uh, to the board with that. Um, okay. I just listed out just kind of a quick list of, in my mind of the, the topic points in there. So we're happy to talk about any of these. If so I think what we're going to do, just because as we kick off the hearing, I want to make sure we hear from our engineer. Sure. I want to make sure we hear from our principal planner. And I want to have room for the public to weigh in. So um, if Phil, if you did you have anything you wanted to... Uh, say at the outset? Yeah, so this, this project is a fairly uh, uh, non, I was going to say, not, not, not going to be a lot of permanent impacts relative to Solmar. There are obviously going to be some significant work in the easement for a while, some, some uh, a little bit creek leader to, to get their trucks up and down. They do have a fairly lengthy drive to get from one side of the pond all the way back up to in, in the easement itself. They're going to have to take, they're going to bring in a pipe, pipes in. They're going to put bring in some backfill as well to, uh, to protect their pipe. So the excess dirt is going to have to be taken out. So there's going to be a little bit of, of truck traffic in, in, this, in this area. They do have an extensive uh, plan. It seems like they've done this before. Um, you know, from adding to cross uh, wetlands. Uh, I reviewed the uh, order of conditions relative to conservation. They seem to have worked everything. Um, relative to the <coughs> stormwater standards themselves, they're not proposing. Standard one is a, a new outfall, new un out outfall to wetlands, <coughs> uh, untreated outfalls. They're not proposing any out outfalls. As the applicant said, they're not proposing to uh, provide any um, impervious surface. Once the ground is restored, they should have the same runoff conditions post-construction as they did pre-construction. Uh, because they don't, again, because they don't have impervious surfaces, they don't have to uh, deal with recharge, which is standard uh, three. Standard four is TSS removal, also so associated with impervious surfaces. Uh, they're not in, in critical areas. Uh, it's not land use of high potential pollutant load. So the bulk of the issues is going to be related to erosion controls, managing this stormwater pollution prevention plan during construction, and, and then restoration. Also. So they do have a, a fairly extensive restoration where they would go to tell the roads up as they back out and, and remove all the adding and all, you know, and do some restorative seating and stuff like that. So in general, from a stormwater manager stand, long-term stormwater management standpoint, it's uh, not significant. Um, however, again, we want the board to be on top of the stormwater pollution prevention plan and be notified when so there's a few conditions I can do. Perfect. Thank you very much. I have a question for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there any special consideration that should be taken for soil removal or disturbance in the previous legacy, 
legacy farms oh the legacy farms area yeah so any any place there was pesticide used that sort of thing is there anything that you know in terms of transport off-site of soils or anything like that so i believe they're going to take the topsoil that's that's what will be would have all the in it and then the stockpile on the side. If you, if you show them that section, they do have stockpile things okay. as they go. Mm -hmm. And then they would excavate once they move this, because they're going to restore that. The thought of our room is going to stay on site. Okay, it, but it, it, it does say that an unknown amount is going to be transported off site of soil. So I just wanted to say, you know, if there was any special considerations for that particular area. Yeah, that yeah. I mean, that, that could be included in the condition. Okay. To say, you know, the top soil has to be managed. Madam Chair, I can further answer that question, too. I can add some info. Uh, for a typical process, if we do have to take material off-site, our contractor will have part of their scope will be to secure a lay-down area close to the project. It may not necessarily be in Hawkington, but it would be in a close proximity to the project. And any soil we would ultimately take to a disposal facility would be taken to this lay down yard first and then sampled per the MCP to Massachusetts standards and uh, our LSP would be in charge of sampling that. Some facilities may have requirements for uh, herbicides or pesticides and we, if that was the case we would make sure that that was part of the analytical data that we'd sample for. Um, so it depends on the facility where we would take it but um, a comprehensive list of samples of analytical data would be provided to those facilities, but the lay down yard would facilitate that sampling. Thank you. I think that we already know that the soils on that site need to be handled carefully. Um, and so they probably shouldn't be carted off and, and brought back. There's some thought should be given to dealing with them on site and leaving them on site. Yes. Absolutely, and so the intent would be that the soil would remain on site to after the, the backfill, the pipe was installed and backfilled, and at that point, if there were any excess soils, it would yep. it would be removed. Um, but the intent would be to, we find that, you know, we're not gonna say there won't be any excess soil, but in the, <coughs> in the excavating process, we may come across a boulder that comes out, which we would remove from the site, in which case some of the excess soil could fill that void um, so we do find that in our in our experience that um, not to say that it all equals out, but we find that we can we can we don't usually end up with a lot of excess soil. Okay, I, it's just a concern on that site in particular. So and, yeah, we will take note of that. Yeah, okay. and, uh, and the process I mentioned would be set. Our goal is really to lose as much on site as we can back in the trash and chipping mm -hmm. it off site is really as Sean mentioned. Just you know do the fluff factor or, you know, if we did an offset from the sand that we put in the trench, um, it's secondary to using it in the trench. It's, it's cheaper for us. It's logistically easier, less traffic, so there's okay. a benefit to using it in the okay, trench. Okay, thank you. Yep. John. Uh, so Phil covered the stormwater permit pretty well. Um, I'll defer to him on those issues. Uh, no particular comments from me on the earth removal, but I do want to call out two comments uh, that the Town Council had and Board of Health regarding the existing pipeline. Uh, Board of Health is concerned with the chemicals that are currently in it and uh, was um, <coughs> advocating flushing of that pipe before abandonment. And um, Town Council also wanted the Planning Board to consider the retirement of that pipe and the best possible way to do that. Uh, so I would caution the Planning Board to investigate Heed those that. comments. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right, so we will look for you to have a, uh, some thoughts on that the next time you come back, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, at this time, I'd like to uh, make sure that we hear comments from the public who came for this hearing. So if we can, they have to actually sit here so that no, no folks problem. at home can hear it. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm 
here. My name is Bob Foster. I live in 85 Franklin Road. The pipeline does go through the rear of my property, probably 150 feet or so. Um, and I start out by saying that the, the, uh, although the Commonwealth requires, uh, has required the company to show a possible alternate route, and the company has done that, they've shown a possible alternate route for the pipeline which are supposed to be in public streets. And I'm opposed to that. Uh, I prefer to see it stay right in my backyard rather than having a street in front of the corner for a six months or an installation of a gas pipe. And one or two of my neighbors feels pretty much the same way. Um, as for the, uh, the pipeline itself, um, just for clarity's sake, uh, the word replace has been, was used and that kind of suggests that somehow or other the six inch is going to be taken out and the 12 inch put in, but which is not the case. Of course, the six inch has to remain because it's providing uh, gas to downstream uh, uh, public. So it will stay in place. Um, my concern primarily is going to be the process of construction. Uh, they talked about excess material. Much of this uh, uh, pipeline, at least behind my house, and for the oh, half mile or so from Cross Street crossing to the Ashland town line, is lots of boulders, very, very large boulders. And when the original pipeline was laid, they dug it, of course, they ditched and or they, 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 they dug it out, and they threw much of the material outside the easement. I mean, I, in the, in the back of the property, for several of my properties along my neighborhood, we can see where they disposed of rocks and boulders outside the easement. <coughs> I've attended uh, at least two of the uh, public uh, hearings that these fellows mentioned tonight, and I've been assured that they will not be disposing of any material outside the easement. Well, it's a 30-foot wide easement. They're going to protect a six-inch uh, existing pipeline with, as I understand it, 400 PSI pressure. All the time they're installing a new 12-inch line a few feet next to and parallel to the existing line at a depth of something like five feet. What I, the plans that I saw in the Conservation Commission showed a four-foot cover, so I'm four feet over a 12-inch pipe with another six inches of bedding. It's, it's pretty deep. And to do that, through that wetland, and you saw in the picture, those puddles that you saw at one point, that's pretty much in my rear property and from there on down to the Ashland town line. That's what it looks like. Today it's underwater. And except for maybe a, a couple of weeks in, in August, there'll be standing water in that, cross, in, in that area. So that process of excavation is going to be in water. They're going to have to dewater the site in order to lay the pipe. They're going to have to dispose of some very large rocks and boulders, which they are not obviously not going to use as backfill. That's going to go somewhere, and they're going to have to bring in material for the backfill. The discussion of whether or not there will be trucking on and off the site, pretty certain it seems to me that we'll have any construction uh, all my life, so I've seen a lot of this kind of thing, particularly here in Huffington. So I do believe that there will be lots of trucking on and off the site for a fairly long uh, trip in from Cross Street to get to that wetland that you saw in the, uh, in the, uh, in the view. So the process of construction, not only is it a question of how they're going to dispose of that material that they can use for backfill but also how they're going to protect the existing pipeline. I mean, we'd hate to see East Africa disappear in a big cloud. Um, yeah. Makes, nobody will be happy about that. I, and I'm, you know, I'm uh, pretty confident in, in the, uh, the town of Hockland, the BPW, the Conservation Commission, uh, our, our town engineers, to supervise us and see that there is you know, safety there in the construction. But I make the point that it is going to be uh, not easy. Um, 
the question is that the, 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 the word significant or insignificant was used Insofar as the real my property, it is significant to me at least, and uh, to many of our neighbors, and that whole wetland area. Uh, a couple of questions uh, I didn't hear clearly, and either it's because the, the acoustics in here are not so good, or else it's me. And it may be it's, it's probably the acoustics, Bob. Uh, I'm not too sure of, of the timing on this. I'd like to know uh, when this is going to begin, and what the timing is likely to be. Um, also, I'm interested to know about jurisdiction. I know the Conservation Commission has jurisdiction. They'll have an order of conditions. I've seen plans in their office. But I'm wondering, is there an overlap between uh, your jurisdiction and that of the Conservation Commission under our bylaw? And who is actually tasked with supervising uh, the construction as it's going on? I'm going to defer to the, the principal planner to explain that. So um, town council suggested, rightly so, to uh, provide in the conditions for funding to have uh, the town engineer or the town's consulting engineer review the construction. Um, so that would be the oversight of the SWIP and the stormwater issues and the uh, uh, earth removal. I would assume CONCOM has its own uh, peer reviewer that would oversee any wetlands issues, a reconstruction of any type of wetlands and the work within the wetlands. So it would overlap in the areas that the work overlaps, um, but it would be more for uh, the CONCOM's engineer would be reviewing the CONCOM specific work and the planning board's engineer would be reviewing the planning board specifically. Yeah, as I just say, here's the stormwater management conservation commission, of course, is for natural conditions. Correct. Um, and and their, their concern is going to be the heavier concern, I'm sure, because it's going to be a lot of water in there, and uh, it's very difficult to And I, th I think I heard the timeline is 2020 to 2024. Is that, is that right? right? 20 to 24. 2020. It was 20 to 20, 20, 20, 21 for Hopkinton and then the whole. Oh, for the whole thing. I wrote down the whole thing it was to 2024. Yeah. But to 2021 in Hopkinton? One and a half years approximately. One and a half years approximately in Hopkinton. That's okay. That's not unreasonable. With May through November construction period. Mm -hmm. yes. Again, just for the record, you know, I, my understanding is that they will not be disposing of any soil outside the 30 foot easement. Okay, those are my interests. Thanks very much. Thank you. To the Thank chair, you. can we ask them to answer the question about the alternate route? Yeah, but not right now. Okay. We don't have any other time. Yes, please come forward. <laughs> um, Katie Towner, 9 Kruger Road. Um, my, my question had to do with the... Um, the, the letter that the Board of Health Director wrote about flushing the, uh, the abandoned pipe. And um, I guess I w my question uh, to the board to ask the applicant is um, to identify the hazardous materials that are um, in the abandoned pipe. It's my understanding that it would be all the hazardous materials that the applicant routinely removes from the, um, the, the, the gas pipeline as a matter of the, um, their normal operations when they bring the gas in. It has impurities. They remove it. They know what they are. I think it's only right that um, that, <coughs> that should be part of this public hearing to say what those chemicals are. Um, I'd be surprised if they hadn't had a report um, about the, um, as has been done with other projects that they've been involved in and brought before this board, um, if there hadn't been a consultant hired to, to um, write a report about the potential hazardous um, chemicals involved in the project. Um, I believe that, um, I don't, I don't know what all the hazardous materials are, but I believe mercury is one of them that would be present in that abandoned pipe. And um, that's 
the reason why um, the re the request to add to the order of conditions the the flushing of the pipe and also the um, that it shouldn't be that in the course of flushing the pipe none of the surround soils should be contaminated by the you know the mercury or the other chemicals that are in the abandoned pipe so care has to be taken it, it sounds like it would be some kind of a process that would have to be designed um, by some hazardous material reclamation um, company and, and I'm surprised that beta didn't address that in their comments I, th I think that I would I would like to ask why they didn't do that I'd like you to ask them why they didn't do that and um, the just that 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 be highlighted I think that may that the, the fact of flushing a pipe may bring a, a visual of just you know whoosh with water but you know, it's it's not that type of a process. It's a it's a process that that um, is meant to prevent the the soil from being contaminated and and also I I when they were talking about the soil, the existing legacy farms contaminated soil, they did not seem to appreciate. Um, you know, they talked about oh we'll minimize the amount that we removed. They didn't seem to appreciate the issue, so I guess I would ask that that be conversation be uh, continued until th there's acknowledgement that they appreciate the um, the fact that um, you know they shouldn't be removing any soil from the property. Question? Hold on. Did you have more, Kay? No. Okay. <laughs> Um, for the newer members and people at home that may not know, you're an engineer, right? I'm I'm a degreed engineer. I'm not a uh, you know professional engineer. Well, did you your master's or doctorate? I have a, a bachelor's and a master's. I see. So you understand the science, which is what I'm saying is 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 the my point is that you you've studied this and you and you, you know this topic well. I'm not a chemical engineer. <laughs> I am not, I'm an electrical engineer, um, so my area of expertise is systems, electrical, you know, I, I can read drawings, obviously, but I'm not a professional. I, I, don't, stamp, I don't stamp things. Okay. I guess my point is you're a learned person. I think we're all learned people. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Thank you. <laughs> is there anybody else in the public who came to speak? Please come forward. quickly to respond, respond. Yes. Uh, the Board of Health has reviewed, I don't know where they got the results, it was a very long spreadsheet of chemicals that have been identified in the pipe. Um, so I think it would be great to have Eversource confirm that list or provide their own list. Um, and there is a process, the department had explained it to me, but it's yep. something beyond my scope uh, right. to actually do the flushing and it's an established process. So I think- Does the Board of Health oversee that established process? I don't know. All right, we need to find out how that is managed, if we could. Yes, sir. Hi, um, my name is Sean Morrow. I live at uh, 88 Franklin Road. Um, I just have some, you know, pretty general questions and then one concern. Um, uh, you know, just a few questions that I have. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, what the greatest distance uh, the new pipeline will deviate uh, uh, from the existing pipeline? Um, I'd also just like to know the types of construction vehicles and how they'd access that easement. Uh, can they actually, you know, drive the vehicles down the existing easement to access that area? Are they going to be, you know, disturbing forest and woods? Um, and then, um, you know, the, the big thing for me is just uh, concern is just pollution. You know, I have uh, three young children. Um, you know, we have a well. I think most of the uh, the road is on well water. Um, you know, I, I don't know anything about uh, you know preventing the pollution, et cetera. But you know, it is concerning. Just you know, the existing pipe will be in the ground, um, and I have no idea what type of you know pollution could occur from that. Um, but I just you know rely on the town that you know we go through the proper process to make sure um, you know that all that is is taken care of uh, appropriately. Okay, 
Thank you. I should ask the Board of Health about that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, anybody else? Um, we are ready to re to. When, when are we going to continue this to? September 9th. September 9th. Do we have any extensions on decisions? Both of the decisions have to be extended. Uh, the earth removal, yes, because it would be September 9th and August 12th. Yeah, so both of them would have to Both of them, okay. So um, I will entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to September 9th and the decisions on the stormwater and the um, earth removal to September 16th. Better math because I had help from my friends. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Nice job, guys. Thank you all.